Welcome to the Midweek Mailbag. We are back. The NFL Combine is in the rearview mirror. Free agency is technically less than a week away, or I guess technically a week away, untechnically less than a week away, depending on what your definition of technically and the free and the tampering period is. Uh, but hey, it's a Midweek Mailbag. We're here answering your Detroit Lions questions. My name is Jeremy Reisman. I'm the producer at Pride of Detroit, and you can find me, of course, at Detroit on Lion on Twitter. With me, as always, the machine, the managing editor, insert a third nickname here. You can find him at Eric Schlitt on Twitter. Eric Schlitt is here. How are we doing, buddy? Hey, buddy. I'm tired uh, from that uh, fun four-day weekend, uh, essentially, that we had with the Combine, Mm -hmm. and a lot of work. But uh, also, you learn a lot. And yeah. I think that's uh, that's the fun part about this uh, this whole process is, you know, you do a lot of work leading up to the event. You learn a lot during the event. And um, right when you feel like you're just starting to get rolling on the draft, you hit pause because free agency kicks in. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. You got it. And listen, we're going to try to hit a little bit of both. This is going to be a little bit more free agency um, focused because today was actually kind of a big news day across the NFL. Yeah. It, was, it was a franchise tag deadline this Tuesday when we're recording it. A lot of teams made some some roster cuts as well, a um, couple re-signings here and there. So we're going to kind of get at the heart of a lot of that. We will talk a little bit of draft as well. As always, if you want to submit questions, usually the best way to reach us is on Twitter, um, hashtag SPOD, if you want to send it to us anytime or just look for the call on either Tuesday or Wednesday. And then you can also always join our YouTube and Twitch live streams and ask questions there so that we can answer them during the break. But let's get into it. Uh, I want to start with some of the uh, recent news here. And um, today, news dropped that the Lions are re-signing Emmanuel Mosley. Still not official, um, but news are, news is out that they've agreed on a one-term deal. So k Dog asks... How does the re-signing of Mosley impact the Lions' approach to free agency? Does it fill the vet need so they can focus on the draft, or do they still need to add in free agency? That, and, and if they add in free agency, would they have room to fit a high-end draft pick? I don't think it impacts their decisions much yeah, uh, because they went into this process needing at least two. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So um, getting him back is a very nice bonus. Um, but I don't think there's anything more than in him being an insurance option. If he turns yep. into Mosley that we saw in San Fran, that's starter level guy, CB one level guy. And that's great. Right. Uh, at the same time, he has two ACLs that he's coming off of one in each knee. One of them, they had a delay. He could have another delay. Who knows? Like it's hard to predict. And we don't know the type of player that he's going to be. So he is a very nice depth option. And if he's your third cornerback, that I'm probably okay with that. At the same time, I think the vet need is still there. I think the, the, the longevity question uh, means you need to probably address the position in the draft as well. So I think they still need probably a guy from each acquisition stage. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you 100%. And I think you and I have both kind of been on the boat of like maybe the easiest, most secure way to do this is to get a veteran guy on a short-term deal that, that can start, is like starting capable, um, yep. and then, you know, kind of supplement that with, with the draft pick because you, you have to do something, right? You have to have yourself in a position going into the draft where you have two starting capable cornerbacks on your roster just in case your guy isn't there when you're on the clock. And and this draft has has enough people where they'll have options, but if their dude isn't there when they want him to be there, they need to be able to have a a fallback plan to play to to fall back on. Um, and Emmanuel Mosley isn't that guy. He like there's you, you just you can't trust him where he's at. You don't know when he's going to be ready. They probably have a better idea than than we will. Will he be ready by the start of the season? I mean, maybe it it's certainly possible. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. He, Last year, he was trending towards being ready at the beginning of the season, and then he had the setback with his um, recovery, and he almost had the injury at the exact same time as he did in the previous year. So there, there's precedent for him to be ready by the reg, re, the beginning of the regular season, but he can't he can't be your plan A or your plan B right now. He is your plan C, yep. and so essentially, I don't I don't know if this affects anything. If if anything, and and re, 
we're, we're in dangerous, like reading the tea leaves of, of cryptic tweets out there, but Jerry Jacobs said some very interesting things on Twitter today that sounded like maybe he's not going to be back. So to me, if anything, Emmanuel Mosley is like a Jerry Jacobs replacement, which again, like you said, he's, he's your CB3, CB4, something like that. And you need those players. And yeah. given that Emmanuel Mosley has a much higher ceiling than I would say Jerry Jacobs, and, and I don't mean any respect disrespect to J- Jerry Jacobs, but Emmanuel Mosley has put better tape on out there than maybe anybody that the, that's currently signed at the cornerback position with the Lions. So I don't think the Emmanuel Mosley thing changes too much at all in terms of their overall plans. At least I, I sure hope it doesn't. Yeah, I think the uh, there are some adjustments that certain portions of the fan base need to I, I get used to, right? Yeah. And I, and this is this is new territory for a lot of us. Uh, being, you know, having a, having a Lions team that is, uh, I don't want to say they're not stacked, but like they have a, a a a more healthy roster than they have had in a very long time. They have a very good roster right now, yeah. and they're set up to compete by adding depth. And the way that you get the depth is by picking up free agent contracts that probably aren't going to be that expensive. You, right. you, you sign veterans, you draft for depth. Like there's going to be a lot of questions I'm sure today. And there's going to be a lot of questions over the next several weeks of, you know, why would they go after this guy when he's, you know, when they already have starters, because that's the stage that they're at. Yeah. They're at the spot where they only have a couple of starting spots up for grabs. And so they're going to be targeting good players that can fill roles that are maybe depth. Maybe they push to challenge to start, or maybe they're, you know, just insurance options. Yeah. And so this is, we talked in the playoffs, how do you get to be, as deep as San Fran. How do you get to be as deep as KC? This is how. Yeah. You you sign veterans that are cast offs that are still good but are going to cost a little bit less. You add you keep guys that you think are that you can retain at maybe a little cheaper level contract. Not every guy you sign is going to be a starter. Those days are gone. Right. Right? They're I, gone. <laughs> and so go ahead. I was going to say I feel like you're leading into our next question very appropriately here because Maybe. never know an, an, another piece of news that dropped today, not necessarily lines related news, but the Seahawks basically cut both starting safeties, Jamal uh, Adams, right. And more, more importantly to this conversation, Quandre Diggs. And so cr- the, cr- Chris Simmons on Twitter asks with the news digs of being released by Seattle, how would you feel about a possible reunion? If the lines and CJ GJ did, decide to part ways. And so again, like this feels like, again, like that sort of thing. Is there a, a spot for Quandre Diggs on this roster for him to start right away? I don't know. Right. Like I, I feel like the lines would be wise to start their two really young, really cheap safeties in, in Ifatu Melifanu and Kirby Joseph. But Quandre <laughs> Diggs would certainly be nice to have. I guess there, there's so many questions with this one because if if you know if you're building a Madden roster, of course this makes sense. You add a more talented guy who, um, you know you, you know very well who's still you know I was talking to my buddy Mookie Alexander, the the guy who runs Field Goals, and he's like, yeah, Diggs has still got something to offer, and and it's kind of interesting because his overview of Quandre Diggs is not exactly the one that I had of him while he's here. He's like, he struggles to tackle sometimes, but he's very much like a good cover safety. I'm like that's weird because when I remember Quandre, it's like him coming down and like making these big hits and every now and then make an interception. But of course, like he was also blatantly misused a lot while he was here. So um, it would make sense that Seattle probably figured it out a little bit more than, than some of the coaches that were here in Detroit. Anyways, that's all to say (laughs) Quandre (laughs) Diggs, would he come here? We know he loves Detroit, but given where he is at, at his career, given that this might be his last chance to, to cash in. He's coming off like a three or $30 million dollar dealer somewhere around there. So, I mean, Detroit's not going to offer a humongous deal for a guy that might just mm-hmm. be a rotational player, but I don't know. Can, can you make these pieces match? I, I look, I think the way it works in my mind is 
there's a, there should be an interest from Detroit, and there he should entertain the idea of coming to Detroit. At the same time, he sh- is he would be best served for himself to keep his options open and to look for a starting job because there are going to be situations out there that could offer him that this free, this safety market, like people, the most popular position getting cut this right now is safety. And then it's going to be a flooded safety market. So what we could end up seeing happen is a lot of guys getting paid and a lot of guys, you know, trying to wait it out. And if Quandre, because of his age is a guy that's trying to wait it out, he might be in that like second or third wave of, yeah. of signings. And if that happens, Detroit could come along and offer him a CJGJ type deal where it's like, Hey, I'll give you $5 million and let you, you know, come in and compete. And that might work out great because if, if he's not, he should try and get a starting job. Yeah. Cause I think he's a start starting safety. Right. Right. But if that starting job is not there because teams are filling it with younger guys or different options or other guys, whatever, for whatever reason. Yeah. If he goes through a wave or two and he's looking at the teams where there's not as clear of a path, I think Detroit would be very appealing to him because he absolutely loves this city. Sure. Right. It's he, he has, he always has loved the city and he likes, he, he likes the ownership. He didn't like the GM or the coach at that was <laughs> there at the time. Yeah. Right. And they're no longer around. So the path there is, I think he could end up coming back in a similar way that kind of CJGJ did for Detroit. You absolutely want a veteran right now. Yep. If you include nickel as like your, your third safety kind of option, you have three safeties. They're all on rookie contracts yep. and yes, you want those rookies to play, but you also need a veteran in the room. You cut Tracy Walker. He's your, he was your veteran. He's no longer there. CJGJ is a free agent. He's no longer, he, he's not necessarily returning. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. Who knows? But if CJJ, GJ is gone, if Tracy's gone, you Detroit absolutely needs a veteran. Yeah. And if he has not made it through a season without getting hurt. Okay. Yep. And so you absolutely have to have insurance at that option. So you need a Detroit is, is on the lookout for a starting level veteran that they can get at a reasonable price to help lead the locker room and someone who is a le- can take on a leadership role. And that screams Quandre Diggs. So yeah. if he doesn't get signed in that first or second wave, a reunion in Detroit could be possible. I, I think it makes a ton of sense for the Lions. I'm having trouble seeing it make sense for Quandre other than the he loves Detroit factor but that's what we said with cj gj last year right like he was one of the top 10 free agents on the market and he didn't get picked up right the difference and and i don't really like there's a couple things one is i i don't think the safety class is great in the nfl draft so um, i agree you know if there if there are teams that are safety needy free agency is where they're going to be looking and like you said there's going to be a lot of them out there and i I mean you you have to consider that that quandary digs by mere having what two, three pro bowls in Seattle is going to get some attention there. Um, but the Lions can offer home. They can offer a, a chance at a championship. I mean, like how cool would that be for Quandre to, to come back to a, a, a true competitor in Detroit and, and win for the first time in Detroit. But I, it, it all depends on what he is seeking right now. Because like I said, again, yeah. he's a guy that, that is going, that could very well be at the point of his career where he's like, let me get one last big contract out there. And the Lions should not be spending a big contract on Quandre Diggs. Like he's like five, six million. That's probably the peak of where you should go. And even that feels a little much. Maybe you throw a, a, a void year there to, to, to spread it out and, and make it not hurt so much. But essentially he's going to be a, a rotational role. But we do know that the Lions have valued bringing in these, these veterans as mentors at, at every position. That it's something they've been doing since they got here. It, it's something that they've made a concerted effort to do to help develop their young players. And we, we give Brad Holmes all this credit for drafting all these young players, but the coaching staff also deserves a ton of credit for having the foresight to have that kind of plan in place. And so there's ways it can make sense. I'm The only reason I'm downing it is because I think Quandre would be wise to, to know what's worth and go get a last big contract out of a team that's a little bit more safety needy than than the lions are sure although if he's looking for a ring it's weird to say that isn't it? i know 
But like, I, like I've hey. been using that for all of my free agent things. Like, Same. well, you know, the, <laughs> if the Lions want a patchwork one year veteran, they might want to come here for a ring. And it's just like, I've never been able to type that before. That's awesome. This is great. Um, yeah, he, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm all aboard. This, you know, remember last year when we had this discussion about Graham? Yeah. I am. I was all. Uh, we were both all in. I'm all in. All in on this. Bring him. Yeah. Um, on the other side of the coin here, and another common question um, from Innovating John on Twitter asked: Last week you sounded as if you're convinced CJ Gardner Johnson is gone. Why so? Um, I I can kind of give my my quick answer to that. To me is. C.J. Garner-Johnson didn't like being in a rotational role last year. He said it. Nope. Um, he said, you know, I didn't go through all this rehab just to be a rotational player. Completely understandable on his level. And to his yep. credit, he, he gutted it out. He played like a professional. Finished the season without, you know, throwing a fit. Just talked to the media and said, honestly, I'm not, I'm not happy about this, but I'm going to go be a professional. Now he's entering the second year in which he's going to have to sign a prove-it deal. Probably even less than what he signed last year. And his entire goal of this season is going to be, let me catapult this into a big contract next year so that I can sign a three-year, $40 million deal next year. If he's going to do that, coming back to Detroit makes very little sense because he's probably going to be in a rotational role again. And if you're in a rotational role, you're not going to put up seven interceptions. You're not going to you know, put up a, a ton of stats. You aren't going to make it seem like you're a full-time starter here. And so he needs to go somewhere where there is an opportunity to play full time. And that's not in Detroit from the Lions point of view. Sure. Go ahead and try again. You can throw them another offer. Makes sense for all the reasons we just said Quandre Diggs. But to me, it does not make sense that CJ Gardner Johnson would want to come back to Detroit. And it's not personal. It's just professionally speaking. He needs to go find himself an opportunity to be a starter. And like we just said, there's not a lot of opportunities to add starting safeties in the draft. I think there are a lot of safety hungry teams out there. He can find himself a job. Yeah. I also think his price tag is going to be a little bit heavier than Quandre's um, because he's younger. Maybe. Um, I, well, I, look, I think the younger factor yeah. plays in, sure. um, you know, I think he's going to want, he's <sighs> just my, just my guess. Right. I think, yeah. I think the fact that Quandre's, what 31 right now right yes. is he's, yep. he's over 30 right yep. so like teams aren't going to want to invest too much into the in, into a 31 year old unless they have a clear path and they know exactly what they want and so it's just my guess of how the market plays and again it's it's hard to it's always hard to 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 figure out exactly what's going on with the market because often when you think one thing is going to happen something completely different happens um but just based on how teams seem to be approaching free agency and how they seem to be devaluing the safety position, just so willing to get rid of players. Um, I wonder if the cost of that position group is going to start to, to dip a little bit. Maybe. Um, I think it's one of the reasons why Chauncey was not, or CJ was not as maybe coveted last year. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if that's, if that's a factor, then, you know, lower price tags, it just, it just, it, it's not as good for the, for the position group. And it makes those starting spots even that much more valuable. So, um, geez, I think I, I agree with you. I think the lions, it makes sense. Either one of these guys, because you can bring them back and play a role. Um, in my mind, I've seen more from Diggs over the years to yeah. make me want to say, man, this guy is a leader and that is, and he can be a mentor. He can play multi, you know, he can play, they can both play multi positions. Right. Yep. Um, and you're not married to trying to force him on the field. That's cause that's kind of what it felt like down the stretch. A little bit. Right. It almost, it felt like they were like forcing him on the field and, and taking the other guys off. Um, now, granted, he played fine. He got an interception. Like sure. he, it's not like he was a bad player. I'm not trying to insinuate that at all. He wasn't a bad player, um, but it felt like they wanted to go with their younger guys, and they were trying to just still find ways to get him on the field. Yep. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what their approach is going to be this year. I mean, who knows, right? Like, there's so many factors that kind of are a bit unknown at this stage. That I think we have to keep a lot of the options open when we start. Um, 
evaluating which players might fit, which players might not, and just uh, free agency as a whole. Yeah, I mean, the lines have made it abundantly clear. They just want talented players, and they'll figure out the configuration after that. that that's my approach. Yeah. Right? That's my whole approach to the offseason. Yep. Bring in football players and let Dan Campbell figure out where they play. Yep. Right? I'm not ruling anybody out anymore. Everybody's on the table. <laughs> well, <laughs> speaking of talented players that are potentially on the, the on the table here, uh, Darius Williams, yeah. former Jaguars cornerback, also gets released this week. Yeah. Former Rams cornerback. Former well. Rams cornerback as well. So there's a lot of connections here. Former Jaguars means that Deshae Townsend was his coach. And former yep. Rams cornerback, I believe he went undrafted in 2018. The Ravens initially got him, cut him, but the the Rams picked him up on waivers. So he is a guy that Brad Holmes and Ray Agnew probably both have a bit of familiarity yeah, right. with and were probably tugging on uh, Les Snead's shoulder and being like, I kind of like this guy. So what are your thoughts on, on a potential reunion there? Lions have a big cornerback need. He's coming off a pretty decent season there in Jacksonville. Does he maybe jump to the top of your list here? I don't know if he jumps to the top, um, but losing a couple of the big names to franchise tags yep. certainly shortens the list, right? Um, I don't know if he jumps to the top. He's there. I, I, I still think there's some other guys to be considered. I still think Wuze is a guy to consider. Uh, but, man, there's a lot of familiarity with him for sure. Yeah. And so I do think he's going to be in that conversation for um, – a potential reunion here in Detroit with a couple of these guys that are familiar with him. I, I can't say I'm like abundantly fil- familiar with his game. He is mm. five, nine though, <laughs> five, oh, yeah. nine he, buck 87. Yeah. He's a, but, but he plays on the outside primarily. He does. He's a he little, he's a little Aaron Glenn out there. Well, that's the thing. I mean, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's the, uh, that's the whole thing is like anytime, any five, nine play, like, look, <laughs> Mike Sanders still, uh, we, oh I, mean, I don't want to, you just, you just had to bring then, him up. <laughs> well, of course. Cause there, you know, I got questions over the weekend about him cause I was gushing over him Yeah, and people were like, Hey, where, um, you know, what is, is there ever been a, a cornerback at that size mm-hmm. that has succeeded in the NFL? And I'm like, he's the exact same size as Aaron Glenn. Yeah. Like the exact same yep. size. And so this you 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 you're say you're doing this same scenario. You're saying this is another guy who's an Aaron Glenn size guy. Now, if your other side was a little bit taller, I'd be a lot more apt to sure. be like, sure. "Hey, let's go get it." Sure. But if your starting corners are like 5'9 and 5'10, <laughs> it's probably not the best thing to have in the NFL. So, that's I think part of the reason why he's maybe not going to the top of my list. Sure. But um I still think he's a good player, talented player. I wouldn't hate if he showed up in Detroit. Yeah, four straight seasons of at least 10 pass breakups per PFF. He's got two seasons separately with at least four interceptions, including one last year. And as a career, he's only allowed a 57.4 completion percentage. So a lot of statistically, it's all yeah. there. Um, he's, he's going to be 31 next week. So also up there in age. Probably can get him on the on a relatively cheap short term deal, and again, it kind of fits that mold that we're kind of looking to do: sign a short term yep. older guy that can that can fit and play now, draft as well, so that you're you're set for the future there as well. Um, let's see, we'll do one more. We'll try to fit one more in here. Um, mm. we'll stick with the cornerbacks here. Our good friend Brad Holmes's bulge asks, "Can can you construct a hypothetical market value trade?" for these two players, Legereus Sneed, Marcus Lanmore. So uh, Sneed got the franchise tag officially, but the Chiefs have been saying, or not publicly saying, but reportedly have been saying uh, that they're open to a tag and trade, which means um, not a situation where the Lions would have to throw a long-term deal their way and the Chiefs would either match it or force the Lions to give them two first-round picks. It would be Come up with whatever, whatever trade terms you want, and we'll see if they want. So let's start there. What do you think a luxurious need trade would cost Detroit? Because I think we both agree it's kind of unlikely the Lions go this route, but let's just set the parameters of what we think it would cost before we say yes or no, we wouldn't do this. I think it's a lot. Yeah. Um, I know people are talking about like second round picks and stuff like that, but not all second round picks are, are, are equal, right? Sure. Like the Lions second round pick versus the Bears second round pick are two very different picks. True. 
right? Um, so I don't know if a I don't know if a second round pick is is enough. Um, I mean, we can say it is for argument's sake, but sure. I don't know if it is. And then, okay, I'll just you. That's all you wanted. You wanted to know that first, so we'll set that up first. I'm saying second round pick. I think that's where where it starts to. I know a lot of people will say, you know, Jalen Ramsey only cost a third and and a swap of tight ends or whatever they did. There was a player involved in that trade as well. Um, but I feel like Snead, you're. I think he's about a year younger than than Ramsey, and if I'm not mistaken, Ramsey already had like a big contract that you were assuming. In this case, you're you're potentially working off a one year deal. That's what 19 million or whatever for the franchise tag, and then from there you're gonna have to pay a bunch so i mean maybe you get away with third round pick but i i kind of doubt it and it would have to be minnesota's third round pick not your own third round pick um yeah, 72 or whatever it is yeah right? and i think i think the issue that you run into is how much competition are you going to have for legerious need how many other hungry cornerback hungry teams are there going to be out there um but i think i think like if, even if we're talking a day two pick i'm probably out right like I, I would love a Legereus need. I do think he's being a little bit overrated and, and Ryan keeps yes. rightfully pointing out the fact that he had what, like 15 penalties last year. Some insane. I think it was 17. I think he had 17 penalties last year and I don't see anyone talking about that, which is like, I mean, that matters. That man. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not of the mindset of wanting to give up a top 100 pick yeah. for any player. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, especially, I mean, is in this free agent market, right? right? Like, I don't like the idea of having to give up capital to overpay yes. someone a free agent price tag. It doesn't make any sense to me. I would much rather trade a guy who already has a contract, or I would like uh, draft a guy, just stick and draft. Look, we've seen what Brad Holmes does with top one hundred picks. Right. I don't want to give those away. I want to give him more. Top 100 picks. I don't want to give so them away. You want to trade right? down. Got it. Well, I want more picks. <laughs> I, I, I don't, whatever. Right. So I wouldn't trade a top 100 pick for any free agent. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, what about Marcus? I, I did it again. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore. Um, because that's that's kind of interesting. We won't get into the nitty gritty of the the contract detail stuff. the The only thing we'll say is, in order for it to even make sense on the Saints' part, the Lions would have to wait until after June first to complete this trade. Now they could agree to terms with it beforehand, but they can't complete this trade financially for it to make sense for the Saints until after June first. Which means a weird situation where you trade for Marshawn Lattimore, but he's not on your roster during OTAs, during during minicamp, all that. You'd basically miss the entire offseason program until training camp. So let's start again with, with what it would cost to trade for Lattimore. Um, this one would be rel- like extremely more cheap, correct? Well, I would think it would be cheaper. I think you'd be talking about a third rounder at, at this point for him. Ooh. And a lot of that is the same reason that you're talking about um, Jalen Ramsey is because he's carries a contract that's yeah. – that's, expensive and i don't they did something to the contract that i'm i don't remember the exact details of it but i seem to remember them making some alt some like kind of unusual adjustment yes. to it yep uh in order to make it more tradable i just don't remember the parameters around and what that entails like yeah. what is that there's like an how option much... yeah it's it's messy right. but here's the, the Lions can make it so that he has a $15 million salary cap hit this year, which is basically his base salary, and then not have any money, any guaranteed money committed beyond 2024. So it'd just be an $18 million salary and an $18.5 million salary in 2026. That's that's all they're on the hook for, and no dead money in 2025 or 2026. Is that my, okay. I'm taking this from over the cap, is- yeah. Over okay. the cap wrote an entire then, article on this, and and to be and I okay. want to throw I want to throw an art I want to throw something okay. from the article out there too. They were suggesting it would only cost a fifth. Oh and, wow! Okay. And I think and I think the reasoning for that is the injury history. Okay. Um, I mean, if it's a fifth, it's it's a lot more palatable, right? Certainly, yes. Um, 
you have a guy who's had a lot of success. Um, you ha- uh, especially with this coaching staff, right? They know him. Um, he's still young, right? Like I'm trying to look at his age too. Um, I want to say 28 ish. Yeah. Yeah. He's 28. So, um, I'd be more okay with a deal like that because he's worth that price tag. And I'm not, I'm not against paying him paying a corner, like a, a, a heavier price tag that that's not it. But like, if you're giving up a fifth, it's essentially a throwaway pick. Right. Right. Like that's a gamble pick where you're using it to draft. Like, so I'm not worried about giving up anything like anything beyond the fourth round. I don't care what it is. Um, I just don't, you can, you can, oh, you can trade it away. You can. It's just, that's the way it it is. It's all gamble picks. And so if you're giving up one of those picks, basically to take on a contract and you're getting a good player out of it, you could have, you could have a Jared Goff situation on your hands, right? Sure. Or you end up like, Hey, I have a, it's a pretty good price tag, but I'm going to get a player that I know can play. Um, and they know that Marsh, Marshawn Lattimore can play, right? He comes 100%. with a plenty, plenty of connections to the, the current regime, most importantly, of course, with, with Aaron Glenn. Right. So, yeah, for a third, which was my original, like, first, that popped in, the first idea that popped in my head, I, I don't know if I'd be on board with that. If yeah. you're talking now fourth, I'm getting a little bit... I'm I'm more warming up to the idea. Fifth, I think it's that's a lot easier. Yeah. And and I'd be a lot closer to saying yes to a fifth. Um, because it's essentially like nothing. Yeah. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Like I, I don't. I mean, but the way that fifth round picks are valued. Like so yeah. It'd be like it'd be like in my mind, if you're trading a fifth for him, it's essentially like signing him to a free agent contract where you're giving him right. sixteen million per and I think that's palatable our live audience is, is screaming trade away the eagles 2025 fourth round pick that the the lions <laughs> got in the uh deandre swift trade which hey i mean <laughs> i'm on board um but again right. because you can't uh, the, the again like the key to this deal is you can't give them a 2024 draft pick because the trade if if you want if right. if it makes sense for the the uh the saints you have to consummate the trade after the draft so uh, you would be digging into 2025 draft picks if it was a draft pick yeah. trade so maybe maybe so that's, that's how you work it out. If they did that, it you know, are you okay with trading away DeAndre Swift for for Lattimore? I think most Lions fans would say yes. Yes, absolutely. All right, let's take a break here. That was a super long first segment. When we come back, yes. more of your Lions questions, maybe a little bit of shift into draft talk when we come back here on the midweek mailbag. trying to do the math and i couldn't do the math of what the con the contract the the contract is super weird i was talking over with one of my my bosses and it's just it's super weird it's why i didn't want to get too much into the weeds there because it's just yeah but that's super complicated that's the whole crux that's one of the big like cruxes of of the trade with Lattimore is the contract is 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 wonky right yeah so um yeah so Mm. i don't know what i've been having a lot of trouble with youtube lately and I'm not sure why we're not live on YouTube, and I don't think there's anything I can do to change it right now. Um, so I, I just, yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened there. Um, I, I'm looking at YouTube, and it says there's a scheduled stream at 6:01, which is when we went live. So I don't know why that's not like what we're, I don't know. It's it's frustrating. I'm going to type in the chat over there. <clears throat> I will. So if, if you're YouTube native um, and I just typed it in the chat there, uh, I will upload this stream to YouTube so that if, uh, if you are a YouTube person uh, that usually uses YouTube as a, your primary source for this and you have Amazon 
you get a Amazon subscription to you can get one Prime uh, or one Twitch subscription through Prime. And so that will eliminate your commercials because I saw that in the chat. So if you're like, hey, I don't want to pay for a subscription and I also don't want want to watch the commercials and YouTube's not working. You have Amazon pays for one Twitch subscription for you a month. You just have to apply it. So when you go down to like where it says, like, do you want to subscribe? There's you can click. uh, There's like a little tab where you can click use my Amazon Prime and it'll boom. Yep. And that gets you in and then eliminates the ads doesn't cost you anything because it's all part of the subscription that you pay for on Amazon. And uh, there you go. Look at that. Eric I, Schilling for, for the Pride of Detroit Twitch page. No, but like, I, I feel that. Yeah, I no. feel that like, I feel, I feel the, I don't want to watch the, the ads in the middle of like what's happening. It's so. <clears throat> that That's yeah, also a good point from Woodchuck Hunter. I don't think you can do use your, your prime sub if you're using the, the Twitch app. So you're going to have to jump on the uh, mm. your desktop or, or laptop. <clears throat> um, but yeah. Um, speaking of which, let me thank a bunch of people on Twitch here. I guess I don't have to delineate between Twitch and YouTube anymore because for some reason uh, YouTube's not working. That's weird, John. What happens when you hit click sub? Do you, if you scroll down, there should be not. You know, I'll just show you how to do it. I don't know if I've used my Twitch Prime. But let's say, well, I know I'm subscribed to John. Let's say, let's, who am I not subscribed to here? Most of these people. Mm-hmm. Seth Dan Drums. Has. Dan's not live. Oh, okay. So you hit resubscribe. Blip, blip, blip. I believe in you. All right, well, let's just mute him because he yells. Um. All right, well, <laughs> it says I, I must be already using it. But like down here, there would usually be an option. If I, this isn't gonna make me do it. Okay. Um, I don't know. There's usually an option around here where it would say. Yeah, it's like a it's like a little. It's a checkbox. It's like a little. Yeah, it's an empty box, and then it says use your Amazon Prime, and then you have to click on it. It puts a little check mark, and then away you go. Hmm. All right. Maybe. Yeah. That. Click elevate your subscription. Interesting. All right. Um, anyways, let me let me thank some people. We'll get into some of your guys' questions. It says subscribe with Prime. There you go. <clears throat> um, exactly. I would say probably use um, our PO box. Exclamation point PO box or exclamation point mail. Old Wolf, by the way, thank you for the 47 months, one month short of four freaking years. Subscribe to the channel. Appreciate you. Mike the Marine, 12 months in a row, 14 months total, says love the POD show. Hey, appreciate you. Um, Thanks for over the year of support. Uh, Light Horse 67, 21 months, says 21 months and enjoyed every single one of them with the awesome coverage you provide. Long live the machine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Lenoble, 1995, 11 months in a row, 14 total. Says, can't wait for free agency, bring back digs, or keep CJGJ. I think we already answered your question there pretty uh, thoroughly. I think we'd both, pro- I mean, I'm cool with having either back. I think digs is the more likely, if I had to guess, neither of them. But digs seems more likely. I don't I don't see a, a way Gardner Johnson's I'm, back. I'm getting Graham Glasgow vibes with, with, uh, with digs. Listen, I mean, I the reunion stuff, it <laughs> it has its benefits. It has its drawbacks. Sometimes you get a Graham Glasgow. Sometimes you get a Marvin Jones. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you get a Jalen Rees-Maben, who's an all-pro. So, Lots I mean, of- <laughs> sometimes you get a Kelvin Shepard. Sometimes you get a Dre Bly. <laughs> <laughs> what did Sean Dion Hamilton, he went somewhere else and then came back, right? And, uh, and I mean, he's, sure. now he's on the staff, right? Yeah, so. true. Yeah, or did he just start in Washington? Then I forget. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> can we get a full Twitch stream where Eric teaches the people how to use the internet? <laughs> we okay. No. I th- we we've unless it, it would be common. <laughs> we've toyed with the idea of doing like a one hundred and one type of 
thing not not of how to use the internet and we certainly wouldn't get eric if we wanted to, to... oh wow but you know, come on am, am i wrong um but like i don't know we we thought about doing like a capology 101 where we just like talk about the the breakdowns of contracts and dead money and things like that and we just never got around to it. <laughs> like, there's so many things that we wanted to do last uh-huh. off season that we never got around yeah. to. There's so many things we wanted but, to do this off season that, like, the opportunity has already passed. Stupid lions getting in the playoffs. Yeah, but maybe in <laughs> blame at one them, point. not us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Definitely not our fault at all. Um, um, I I think I still think the cap one would be good. Yeah. Um, the hard part with the cap one is the prep that goes into yeah, it. Yeah, there's a lot of visuals like, we, required. And here's right, the, I mean, the real problem for me is, especially if we were to do it this year, it would be most valuable if we did it, like, today. Like, right yeah, before well, all the contracts come in. You want to go get my whiteboard? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. Whiteboard. I will start writing stuff down. <laughs> oh, <laughs> for real, I'm in UFC. <laughs> What's happened? Oh, and then UFC just redeemed a Macho Man Randy Savage appearance. Oh, no. Do you want that today? <laughs> Holy cow. I, here's Okay, I'm going to give you an option. We can do it for the second half of this show. Or we can do it for the free agency preview pod, which is tentatively scheduled for tomorrow night. Uh, I'll let you think that over and while while you do I'm going to read the rest of the alerts here uh, Archerino thank you for the 17 months says Eric Effin Schlitt more like Eric Effin Lit <laughs> okay uh, MCDC Forever 10 months subscribed to the channel says give me a kicker at 29 just to spite Jeremy how come you guys are so nice to me and you want to hate on me <laughs> you're so nice to Eric <laughs> But you want to hate on me. What's going on here? Uh, so then Brad will walk in and wink at him. Yeah, I mean, he might. Um, Nick the Greek, 100 bits, says, Does Eric know whether Kowasi Adolfo Mensa was hired as the Minnesota GM because he looks like he has a huge brain? Any truth to the rumors? He trims his hair on his sides to make it look bigger. So this is something that we that Nick brought to our attention last night. He has a a shaped head like a like a Mars attacks alien. Oh, okay. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but you should you should just I've, Google him. Google him right now and, and look at his it. head. It's crazy. <clears throat> it hasn't helped him with some of the trades he's made. <laughs> um. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I was so like. I was completely unaware until I wrote that article today about how mad Vikings fans were about the them trading away that guard midway through the season to the to the Jaguars. Why can't oh, I remember his name? They were furious. They were real mad. Cle- Cleveland. Cleveland. Ezra Cleveland, Cause every, that's right. Cause, yeah, because every time you wrote Cleveland, I kept thinking you were saying the the Browns. And yeah, yeah. Because I was, yeah, and I, like, I had to reread that paragraph like three times. It was weird writing I, it, too. When I edited it, yeah. Yeah, that definitely uh, that definitely was uh, not my my f- most fun edit I've had. <laughs> um, Eric is the machine, and you are the wet blanket. <laughs> you know what that that you know what it all makes sense. Eric feeds you what you want to hear. I tell you what you don't want to hear. Yeah, it makes for a good podcast. I'm, a- I'm very accurate. You're is, no, you're good cop. I'm bad cop. I think is what I'm trying to say. Although I will say, recently you've gotten the better of me in a couple things, and it's made me very angry because I'm usually not as wrong as I have been in the past like two weeks. Hey, I've 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 been good about not uh, trying to 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 dunk on me. To, to, yeah, until you did. I'm, until I'm like, <laughs> by the way, you can dunk on me for this, and you're like, no, I'm not going to do that. And then two minutes later, you dunked on me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say okay. So the latest thing I was wrong on. This is me. This is me taking uh, responsibility. This is me being culpable for my mistakes. Oh. Is as I've been saying pretty much all off season that the Lions got relatively lucky when it comes to their injuries in 2023. And it's something that I still, 
I still kind of hold on to at least a little bit, but the I've been the the one like ace in my up my sleeve. I've been like, you guys just need to wait for the adjusted games lost to come out. <laughs> just wait. Football Outsiders used to do this thing, adjusted games lost, which basically count like it weighs not only how many games you lost to injury, but how good those players are, how much value they bring to your team. It turns out, with one being fewest amount of injuries and 32 being the most of amount of injuries lion the lions finished 18th in adjusted games lost so very average and and if anything a little bit more than average but i still maintain that their best players were extremely healthy in 2023 i think i think they're unfairly getting hurt by like Halapuli Vati Vaitai, which I'm like, eh, was he going to be that good of a player anyways? Was was he going to give us that better play than Graham Glasgow did? Well, I think it was, I think it adds up more than you think. Because like, Jonah Jackson gets bung, banged up. You lose a Lee McNeil late. You yeah. lose Gardner Johnson sure. for most of the season. Yep. I, like, I think it's just, I think the way, the reason it's deceiving is because of they were kind of staggered, right? They were like, normally we get hit. Like, it's like, Oh man, now they're missing like half their starting but like, that, defense. But that's like, also kind of the positive of it is it never feels, it never felt like it had hit the same position over and over again. Like the lines weren't like, cause I feel like in years past, it was like, you just lost every single corner on the roster. You just lost like right. in 2022 is all the guards died in the first month of the season. <laughs> <laughs> the, guard, the guard thing man what a disaster was, that was a couple a right. couple years ago yeah they were on a guard seven at one point right oh my god but like but it, to me it felt like it was very spread out you you lose vita you lose yeah. david you montgomery lose, for a couple games you lose gibbs for a couple of games you lose like, gibbs for a couple games you lose i don't know like Aleem, but did any other defensive tackle get hurt? Did any edge defenders ever get hurt did, outside did of James Houston? Did any defensive tackle play? That's, yeah, that's fair. But, like, <laughs> safeties were relatively healthy outside of C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Corners were relatively healthy all season, but outside of Emmanuel mm, Mosley. I mean, like, yeah. Jerry got hurt. Jerry, Jerry did get hurt Wait. at the end, but, like, he probably could have. Yeah. They put yeah. him on IR because it's the end of the season. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm... <laughs> I think you're underestimating Jason Kavinda's special teams in back here. Okay. Okay. There you go. <laughs> the, I, the thing that that maybe I, I underestimated is those, like, long-term injuries that, like, they're out of sight, out of mind, right? Like Emmanuel Mosley's James Houston. Yeah, because they, they adapt and we get used to it. Right. Yeah. And also, like, I just think at those Nate positions, Sunfeld. at those positions, they weren't. Sh- Shane Zilstra. All right. I think, I think part of it is just their replacements did fine. Outside of James Houston's replacement, which the Lions never really found a good answer for, they were fine without Vitae. They were relatively fine without C.J. Gardner-Johnson. They were at better that position. without Vitae. I don't mean that negative against Vitae. I think Graham just played out of his mind. Right. Scott anyways, Daly, look at that. That was a huge one. They 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 replaced him with a Pro Bowler. Yeah. <laughs> He's not a Pro Bowler anymore. <laughs> Donovan Knight. All right. You guys you are being go. ridiculous now. Donovan was RB3 at one point. That, you, you know what? Know? I will say the backup running back position got destroyed in the in the, in the the preseason. Well, Mohamed Ibrahim. Yeah. He got hurt. Yeah. Like he played like five, he played like 12 snaps. Down yeah. he went. I don't know. But, but uh, I'm, listen, this is me. This is me admitting that I was, I was at least a little bit wrong. I, I really expected the Lions to finish top 10 in, in adjusted games lost, and they didn't even finish the top other, of the league. What's the other thing you were wrong about? Well, I'm not wrong about it yet, <laughs> but we had a discussion on this show, was it last week or maybe the week before, about rule cha- about potential rule changes, and you were banging the table saying, this, these, this league needs to get it together and get laser technology for first down chains and blah, 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 and lo and behold, like three days later... <laughs> Tom Pelissero's out here and saying like, "Oh, the league is looking into new technology to help." <laughs> whatever, whatever. <laughs> it was very loose language, and it, it's not like they're going to have it next year. But, but yeah, I guess they're they're moving in that direction. We'll oh, it's going to make things better. I, I, but to me, it's just like I need to know how it, exactly it's going to work because the whole my whole point was like, 
it's not just about where the ball is. Like it has to be where your el- when your elbow's down or is your elbow down first or is your knee down first or is your thigh down first? That sort of stuff is is harder. And and when one is down, is there a camera angle that shows when the other is down? But you might not need it. That's the whole point of the laser technology is if you can determine when a knee or elbow was down, you can then use the technology to say, where's the ball? Because if the ball is in the, oh, so you're putting are you putting thing? it in the ball? Are you is now there a chip in the ball too? Oh, yes, okay. yes, I'm putting a chip in a ball just like soccer, chip in a ball, right? Because it's gonna mess up kicks. Why do you hate special teams? It, it is not <laughs> going. <laughs> you have a separate ball to kick, anyways. <laughs> but like, yeah, if you if if think about all how many times we're like, well, I can see the knees down. But I can't see where the ball is. Right. So I guess we have to call it a fumble, or I guess we can't call it a touchdown. Now with this, now with chip technology, you can be like, oh, let's see where the ball was at this frame. Oh, boom, boom, six. At, there would have been a couple of times like that. But okay, that, like remember the Kansas City game where mm-hmm. the the fumble into the end zone that they returned for a touchdown? Sure. Yeah, that was that would have been. I nice. was down on that. Yeah, well, chip technology would have won the Lions that game. But that that the problem there was you couldn't tell when he was down. Are you going to put chip technology in knee pads? Are you going to implant yes. players with El- with chips? Elbow pads. They already have them. They're in their pads. No, I mean inject the actual player. No, no, no. no. Well, I mean, like, <laughs> but if his if his if his shin is down, that counts as down. There's not a chip there. What are you going to do? Well, all right, embed it in players. <laughs> okay, I got him. You you convinced me. Eric, let's put it in their bloodstream. <laughs> Eric is full on Elon <laughs> Musk. Let's put chips in people's brains. <laughs> Bloodstreams. There's a go. <laughs> Soft tissue. Um, I forgot what I was gonna say. There was oh, I was uh, I was gonna make another real petty point. And like, even if you put a chip in the ball, it like it's also gonna depend on like the rotation of the ball. Is the ball going straight up when when it hits the ground or like I don't no. know. No, it's like don't th- <laughs> look. I don't know the exact technology. I seem to remember they're like, they do it with a round soccer ball for goodness sakes. They do it with a round tennis ball. Like there's a way that it <laughs> covers the ball. There's a, like, I don't think there's a chip in a tennis ball to, for the record. Okay. <laughs> this is, this right. is the whole argument that we had is just, I just don't know how it's going to work. That's what I this, want to know. To me, it does not seem easily feasible. Look, if they can make the hockey boards disappear so you can see where the puck is, Stop they can it. figure this Stop out. It. Stop it. That's that's great. The blue t- – I totally forgot about that. The glow yes. puck? We're going to bring the glow puck into this conversation? No, like that's no, not a- the glow puck. But, it, but <laughs> like, they, they managed to eliminate the boards, right? You're telling me you can't just, like, see through people, like, now? Like, that's, that's not available? Hockey's more advanced. Hockey. Who has advertisements on their helmets, right? Hockey. All right. All right. Now you're taking shots. Now you're just taking shots at hockey, and I won't have it since we have John in our chat. No, no. I like hockey. I played hockey for a long time. I don't like the fact that they're not funded. <laughs> like, they, they don't make enough money. Their technology uh, should not be more advanced than, than what the Lions have. All right. Whatever. We're moving on. <laughs> this is a silly conversation. There's more there's more Lions related stuff we should be talking about. So uh continue the hockey to th- I'm watching this old school hockey. That, that, remember remember that? Like how long ago was that? Like twenty years ago? The, the glow puck? That? Yeah. Yeah, that it was, was like we're late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah, it was yeah. like it was that yeah, was a while ago. Good old NHL on Fox. <laughs> um Woodchuck Hunter, thank you for gifting a sub to Mink. Uh, Joshua Mertz are gifting a sub to CJ Onk or C Jonk. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, Summer Guy, thank you for subscribing for 20 months. Says, give me the blue Kool Aid. Plenty available. We're all we're all drinking it. Uh, Jay Liv, thank you for the follow on Twitch. Joshua Mercer, three gifted subs, including one to Mr. Poopy Butthole 2127. Just had to say your name. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Jay Liv, not just followed, subscribed as well. I'm guessing. You may have come over from YouTube. If so, appreciate you coming over here. I promise we'll, we'll eventually get back up on YouTube. Not today, but um, hopefully tomorrow. Um, a bunch of letters in a row. Thank you for following. TFGHF, 
I think you just slammed your keyboard. But either way, thank you for following. J Man Luska List Luska Sick. Thank you for the eleven months. Subscribe to the channel. Woodchuck Hunter. What? <laughs> Nothing. I see. You're, I, I'm. I'm seeing into the future. Oh, Keep going. Okay. Uh, 100 bits from Woodchuck Hunter says Mensa looks like Father Yakub. I'm not sure what that's a reference to. Um, over my head. Uh, Jason Sarnik, thank you for the prime. Followed Eric's directions. I imagine. Thank you for becoming a, a subscriber here on Twitch. Texas Wolverine, 25 months subscribed to the channel says 25 months with the best podcast for the Lions. What are the odds the Lions make a run at Daniil Hunter or Chris Jones? I think they're both going to be priced out, right? I don't think Chris Jones is going anywhere. I think they come to an agreement before Monday. Yeah, I think <clears throat> before Monday, you think? I do. Okay. He he was I mean, granted he was he was drunk, but like he made very clear at the parade he's staying. He's staying. Yeah. Uh as for Daniil Hunter, I don't know, man. It would be nice. I think he's going to be priced out. I think so, too. Yeah. be nice to, to erase from a division rival and add to you. be great. It'd be great. I just, I can't, I can't shed the feeling that, that Brad Holmes has told us time and time again, like, I'm not trying to win March, guys. Yeah. Father True. Yakub meme? <laughs> Is it this? Oh, okay. I think I think this is what you wanted me to see. <laughs> that guy, I imagine. Also, I like that, by the way. <laughs> it kind of fits into our layout here. <laughs> like, this is just, like, big old-headed me, and this is big-brained Eric. <laughs> Anyways. Um JT Sam, twenty two months subscribe to the channel says three sweet oh boy. <laughs> is this what <laughs> is this what you were talking about? Three sweet yes. switched Swiss watches. Watch three washed switch Swiss which swatch watch switches. <laughs> which sweet switched Swiss which watches which washed Swiss which swatch watch switch. You nailed it. Um obviously the answer to that question is the Swiss which watch. Obviously. Hmm. Obviously. <clears throat> uh, Maybe we should s- switch the pictures and put the big brain on you. <coughs> um yeah, guys, I don't I don't know why the YouTube stream didn't work. I'm not happy about it. I've been having some minor issues with, with YouTube, um, really for a, a couple weeks now. So, um, you know what? I think I should just, the way you talk about YouTube, it sounds like it's like an ex-girlfriend. I've been having these troubles with YouTube. <laughs> Man, I, she doesn't do anything. Yeah, I said. Yeah. <laughs> I, it, I keep asking her to help me out. I can't get my stuff back. <laughs> All right, so it's gone from the live options now, so it's not there's not going to be people waiting anymore. And, but yeah, I don't I don't know, didn't work. I'm sorry. I left a comment over there saying like I'm sorry, it's not working, but I, we will upload it to YouTube after the show's done. So, anyways, uh, if you guys have some questions, we'll we'll answer some questions now uh, before we get back into the show. We have a a bunch. A lot, of, a lot of really good questions here. I think we have one, two, three, four, five still to go. And, you know, considering we take 20 minutes per question, that's that's a good hour of show left. <clears throat> you got to be thorough. That's <laughs> right. Uh, question, don't have PFF yet. What's, Lada- what's Darius Williams' run defense grade? Not good, last I checked, I think. And I know that's like a do or die type of thing. Again, I'm not that familiar with his game, so I can't tell you. Like, okay, he was he was a 29.9 last year run defense. Now I don't I don't know why. I don't. That's that's kind of the key, right? Like, is he a bad tackler? 58 grade as a tackler. 
Is it that he's unwilling to tackle? Is he a bad run fitter? I don't I don't know. And I don't know how PFF grades the run defense. Because if he's an unwilling tackler, that makes him a no-go from the get-go. Right? Like, but... Certainly would not be uh, what you want, right? We, we've heard... I mean, I didn't, I didn't hear, but he talked to reporters at the combine. Um, Town said that, and he said, like, basically, yeah, if you can't, if you can't tackle, you're not playing for me. Well, Darius Williams was their starter for the past two years. So either they didn't have a guy that could tackle on their roster playing cornerback, or Townsend believes Darius Williams can can play run defense. Can tackle. Yeah, it's it, it. There are a lot of cases in which PFF's grade does not line up with what the what the coaches see. Right. So <clears throat> that could very well be the case. True. I have a really important question for Jeremy. How am I doing? Great. Thank you for asking. I'm I'm a little I'm a little stressed this week. I'm not really sure. What, well, I do know why because like free agency is around the free corner. Agency. And I'm just like, are we prepared? I'm trying to do this big free agency preview series that is probably more work than I need to be doing. But I almost feel like I owe it to Eric, considering he's worked his ass off for the past 17 days doing combine preview and post view. Well, I I mean, it's certainly a lot more for you to do because I haven't been available to do a lot of it. No. You know, I haven't been available to help out as much. So I've just been... You've earned some rest I've time. Had to, and by I rest time, to, I mean you just are busy as a human being now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think there was really any way we could have get, gotten caught up to the point where we are if we didn't take that approach that we kind of did. You know what I mean? Where we yeah. kind of like split stuff up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. Eric and I are going to have to talk about how we're going to approach free agency too because, like, Obviously, when when a signing happens, there's a whole list of things that we typically want to get done for that particular signing, and we got to divvy that up between ourselves and the staff. And I'm going to be in Florida in in like a week and a half. I think we should uh, jump in with both feet and hit the gas. That's what we're going to have to do. I think that's the best approach. True. All gas, no brakes. That's right. Article after article after article. Um, yeah, we might do some emergency podcasts here and there um, as well. But in general, those are probably going to have to wait until the night so that we can do all of the written stuff and then jump on at the end of the night and be like, all right, this is what happened. And then, you know, Brad Holmes will make a deal at like 9 p.m., wake up the entire his entire household, and then we'll have to breaking that's, news in the middle of a podcast. That's, that's the thing that, like, irks me the most about free agency <laughs> is that <laughs> – it's twenty four seven. Yeah, that's that's the worst part. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. What are the things that we should pre write though? <laughs> Just pre write three hundred potential. The one pre write that I sh- should already have done, to be completely honest, is an Amon Ra extension. Graham Glasgow. That one too. Those are like <laughs> the the two priority ones because I think both are going to happen in the next five days. I, go, the golf extension that won to me, I don't know. Like that's I, come I, whenever. I should have it because written. That's that's that's. But this, the thing is, the difference between the Amon Ra and the golf one is the Amon. Okay, I also don't know about the Amon Ra one happening before free. Well, no, technically I, it would be fine. You can do it now, and it just doesn't kick in until like the new year starts because you got to be cap cap compliant right? right so you can't you can't you know right all right but yeah it's 2024 cap. Get it, it doesn't done. start you, until yeah, yeah. 2024 right. you can still the, right the you can still get it done yeah, but, yeah. I, but i mean like signing bonuses and all that <clears throat> sure. baloney um <laughs> um you know uh but golf and amara differences go the difference with golf is that you're going to save a bunch of money Probably. when you extend golf 
and you're probably going to like open cap space up. Right. Whereas with Amon Ra, you have to carve cap space out. Yes. And so you have to set that aside. Yes. So with golf, you can you can take your time because you're gonna you you may end up like they may look at it and say, hey, we're not even gonna worry about putting setting aside money for our draft class because when we extend golf, we'll have all the money we need to get the True. draft class. Like that's that's what you can do with with golf. Yes, with, you, you can I'm theoretically right, go like, in either direction too with golf. Like right. if if you go through free agency, and you're like, eh, we didn't sign a big guy. You could be like, all right, well, let's yeah, just keep let's front golf it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sure. But with Amon Ra, it's all, it's for <clears> sure going, going up. Yes. So now you're like, I have to get this done now because I have to carve it out so that I know where I can go from here. Yes. So that's why the Amon Ra one has to happen now, and the yep. golf one can is backburner to, or can be because <clears throat> from a money standpoint, you got to be ahead of the game. Yeah. And as um, as we've said multiple times too, like Brad Holmes is all over the place of the timing of these sort of things. He's done one before free agency. He's done one in in May. I think I think the what was the Ragna one got done in May? Um, he extended yeah. Khalif right before the season. He extended Jack Fox. Was it Khalif in November? Or, oh no, yeah, yeah. Jack Fox Jack, was mid season. Yeah. There you go. Um, so like, I expect a Jared Goff contract to get done before the season, but it can literally be any day between now and training camp, and maybe even after mm-hmm. training camp. Like, I just don't know. I don't think there's urgency on that end. No. Okay. So there's not urgency with. With golf, there's not urgency with Panay, right? Because you're going to pick up his fifth year, yep, and then that you're going to be on the hook for 19 plus million next. So you're not again. You're, there's no urgency because you're not yes. going to be having to carve money out. <coughs> um, a, ta- a I, I still think a sneaky one is a Taylor Decker extension could mm-hmm. happen, mm-hmm. which would, could carve you out a little bit more money as well because you might want to get him for a couple more, add a couple years onto his deal. Um, all of those, the the time frame for those is a whenever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you have until training camp essentially right. is what ideally before training camp type of thing. Um, I will, I will say, and I brought this up. Um, was it the, 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 the crunch, crunch podcast? Oh, sorry. I, sorry. I, I get confused. Whatever. Um, one thing that I think not a lot of people talk about though, is like, cause like people are like, Oh, just extend Amon Ra now, just to send golf now, do Panay now, like get them out of the way now so that you, you pay low and, and it looks better as time. And, the, the issue that. to me of like doing that and like throw a leam on there and throw like do it all now that requires a lot of actual cash. Yeah. Cause signing bonuses are paid right away when you sign. Yes. Yeah. Like Sheila has to cut checks. Yes. And you, that you don't see that like that many big extensions in one off season for that reason. <laughs> like you have to, ha- like- you have to have the <laughs> revenue actually come in before you spend Two hundred million dollars in in cash in one off season. L- listen, Panay, we're just going to give you the Southfield plant. All right, listen, <laughs> just, yeah. we're going to give you temporary ownership of of the Southfield Ford plant, and um, then then we'll get we'll buy it from you next year. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I threw the like when I was on the podcast. I threw the word escrow in there. I don't even really know what that word means. I know it, it has something to do with like putting money aside. I'm still a child at heart. Like I, I don't know grown up things. I barely know what a mortgage is. It's like rent. Yeah, I mean, just think of it that way. Yeah, it's it's like a monthly payment. It's, just, it's like a monthly car payment. Yeah, well, yeah. I except it, goes but I don't. Towards something. I don't know what escrow is. I I don't. Uh, I'll let you sit down with Laura and she'll explain <laughs> math to you. I know math. Uh, that's well, like grown up math. No, that <laughs> no, not interested. Laura is very talented at that. She'll she'll take care <clears throat> of everybody. Um, all right. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Joshua Mercer, give her the hundred bits. Says Jeremy, why do, we don't give you enough credit? You're kicking ass, Riceman heads. All right. See now it feels Thanks. like I fished for that compliment. I mean, thank you is what I probably should say, but it does feel like I kind of fish for that comment. What you compliment. Uh, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Joshua. There you go. Uh, Q note. Thank you for the follow as well. <clears throat> um, all right. More questions here. Or should we jump back into it? There was one other question. 
Oh, I like this one from Texas Wolverine. Do the Lions have any players on the roster that will reset the market at their position? Panay, I think, is yes. Yes, Panay. Amon Ra, probably not. No. Because Justin, no, Je- just, just Justin Jefferson's going to do. Yeah. 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 Goff, no. Hutch is an interesting one. Uh, let's see what he does. He's got another. He's still got a, a couple more. He's still got a, a two more years before yeah. we'll see where he's at. And then. Well, one more before you start considering it. But yeah. And then two more. I, I, I mean, we're I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but like Sam Laporta. Yeah, I, I do think Laporta could be a market setter, certainly. Yeah, because by then, the other Kelsey might be out of the league. Oh, yeah, certainly. Um, the other Kelsey. I mean, like, when you, look, when you start talking about players that are in the top five or top three at their position, when they get a, when they get a contract, that's going to set, set the market. So, right. <clears throat> on the on the roster as a whole, Panay is a, is yes. Um, I think Laporta makes a ton of sense. We'll see. We'll see where Brian Branch is in a couple of years uh, as a nickel. Uh, he could set the market as a nickel. Could, could if 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 Frank needs another contract, Frank would reset the market. He would. I think a lot, a lot of people assume that he's kind of already on his last contract, oh, I but I, I think that's I an know. assumption. I think that's a. I I agree, but if they need to extend him or like give him a, like, he could reset. He would John. reset the market for center. John. Um, uh uh-uh. uh, bad John. What's that? <laughs> he said Gibbs. Jack Fox, maybe. No, Jack Fox already reset the market once. No second year deals. Um. For Jack Fox? No. Oh, we for Gibbs. For I know Gibbs. No. Okay. Um, <laughs> no second contract. Well, let's see all how right. the let's see how the the market changes all the time. Let's sure. see how the market changes in a couple <clears> of years. <throat> yeah. Um Brian Branch, maybe. Reset the nickel market. Aleem won't unless no. he balls out like I don't think Aleem's gonna get an extension this offseason. He might. He I don't might, think he will. but I, 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 I had, well, I had kind of like pushed it aside myself. But the more I think about it, the more I think he might. Okay, okay. Um, Just an opportunity, another opportunity for me to be wrong and you to be right. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> My initial gut was no. Oh, but, sounds like you're hedging now, now. No, no. But now I'm saying the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm thinking they could get it. They could get it done. He's hedging chat. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, like, yeah. Who can reset the market? There, we're basically talking about four guys, right? Yeah. Three, four guys. Yeah. But that's... That's great. That's fine. That means you yeah. have three, four guys who are the arguably the best at the at their position. Like, we, we used to have this conversation about <clears throat> who is the next player on your team to go to the Hall of Fame. Like, who's probably the next guy? The next... Lions player to go to the Hall of Fame is probably going to be one of these guys we're talking about now as being market setters. Yeah. Like honestly, like we're yeah. gonna we're gonna wait a while because, but this this level of player that we're talking about now, they're tops of the league yeah. at, at, at their position. Like I, I mean, three. Canton should already start working on a panay jacket. Like they might need that time to to find all the fabric needed first of all. It's. It, Give him a, what are you, are you going to give him like a, like a train, like a, like a wedding dress train, like behind his jacket. <laughs> like he, God, he's going to get so much money. Yeah. And then he, I, I mean, like I'm on as an interest. Like to me, if I had to put my money on, on who's going to be the next hall of famer of the lions. I, I, I don't, I don't know. If Frank's going to get it. I think Frank's got a chance. He, I think Frank has a chance. I think he's he, been a top three center yeah. for almost all of his career. He's still young. I think he's got more playing time than than what you think. He's made. He's already made two Pro Bowls. He's already made two All Pro teams or one All Pro team. But that's not enough. Like, I mean, 
But if, no, but if you give him a few yeah. more years, look, not Kelsey's gone. <clears throat> like, True. Who's, your, who's the best center in the league? It might be Frank Rag now. It, yeah. Like, in all honesty. Yeah. Like, no. now that Kelsey's out of the conversation, it might be Frank Rag now is the best center in the league for the next five years. And if that's, that, and that, that's if he what he'll five need. more all pros, right. boom, yes. then you're there. Like, 100%. you know what I mean? Like, right. So, I, yeah, if Frank, <clears throat> Frank is on his way, he's on the trajectory. If his foot, toe, you know, can hold out. Foot, toe, knee, elbow. Yeah. I think he has a legit, like, he's going to be, he's as good at center as as anybody in the league. I don't know if there's another guy that I would be like, oh, I'll take him. No, I'm I'm with you there. It's just, it's just now he's reached that pinnacle, at least in the public mindset. Like, I agree with you. He's probably been in the top two for four years now. Yeah. But that's only really caught on in the last one or two. And now Well, that's that's his, when his all pros are starting to come up, right? right. <clears throat> and now now he has a reputation, which means he's he's got he's gonna have a leg up in terms of voting. The Lions are good and so they're gonna be in the in the national spotlight, so they're probably gonna get more Pro Bowl votes and all pro votes. Um so yeah, I, to me it's just like he needs five more years. Five more years of regular awards and then and then he's in the conversation. But Pan- I mean, Panay is like already the best Panay person. Is- He's already the best person. He's the best person at his position two years into his into his career. Right. And he's and he's like seventeen still. I think, right? he's <laughs> yeah. like seventeen years old. I think he's he's just he's, <laughs> he's now able to vote. <laughs> <laughs> My man, I got a, I got a year wrong, I guess. Um, yeah. Um, jeez. I, I am like, it's obviously way too early to have some of these conversations. But sure, like, but it's I, we're we're in between and speculating. No, no, no. It's not like this but is going to like, be I, memorialized. Those two here. are trajectory are in the going in the right trajectory. Amon Ra is going to be a really interesting one for me. Like he's obviously on the right trajectory too because he's first team All Pro this year in year three. But like there is kind of that you know he isn't the prototype type of guy who's who's you know who again Amon Ra. Wait. Oh, well, because he's not a big outside right, X, right? Guy, right? Like, I don't know though. Like here, I think a lot of those walls have broken down. Um, if you can do it over a long period of time <clears throat> sure. consistently, and everything says that he can, like he can Heinz yeah. Ward his way into right. You know what I mean? Like, so he's Heinz, been the like Heinz, for him. Listen, right. and and Heinz. Go ahead. I was just don't I mean I'm I'm just trying to say like I don't know if I'm on a Hall of Famer and I'm hoping he's watching <laughs> so that like I'm just trying to add the chip on his shoulder like oh you don't Jer- this kid who <laughs> claims to be a Lions fan doesn't think I'm going to be a Pro Bowl or he better go watch the next 15 years of my career. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, ho- I hope he just watched everything before what I just said. Yeah, I'm sure he has selective memory, <laughs> right? Yeah. Someone just clip <laughs> that part. No, don't don't actually do that. Like you're gonna make me look no. bad. <clears throat> um Oh god, I got something in my eye. <laughs> it's your fingers. Take it out. Yeah. Oh, well, it's much better. <laughs> um Yeah. Anyways. I think we're I Is think, Edel- Edelman's not a Hall of Famer, is he? Jeez, I don't know. I'd have to look <clears throat> at some of his numbers. I mean some of these guys that were on like those Patriots teams are going to get, they're going to be like, Oh, you got five pro bowls or five super, super bowls. bowls like, yeah. Right. That's going to help. Nah, Edelman. Edelman's not eligible. Is it five years after you retire? Say that again. How long after you retire? Are you eligible? I think it's um, is it five or is it three? It's either four or five. Um, okay. He retired in 2021. So he's not even eligible yet. <clears throat> he's just he's just got a note in his locker that says Jeremy Riceman just to remind him. I'm on her. <laughs> I'm in, I'm in his notebook now. Just think if you uh if the Lions draft Tip Ryman, you mm-hmm. could just cross out a letter and be like, "Oh, that's Tip's real name is Jeremy. It was it was him that said it, not me. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> stupid name. 
<laughs> he's getting he's getting a 16 seed in the name bracket tournament out of spite. If I even bothered to do it this year, or if I just plan on doing one round like I did last year and just quit. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, we need to like maybe assign that like to someone else, like that isn't as crazy busy as you are that time of the year. Does anyone else gonna want to take the mantle of the name well, bracket no, tournament? Because <laughs> Cause it's dumb <laughs> and no, it gets it no gonna, views. And... They're, gonna, they're gonna they're gonna feel the need to be clever mm-hmm. because you are always very clever oh. and with your with your passion for alliteration when it mm-hmm. comes to names. And it's true. so uh, I do love alliteration. It is. I don't know if there's another person on staff that is at your level of passion for that. <clears throat> Woodchuck Hunter has a long Tigers question for you, but if I know you, I don't think you're capable of answering it. I have not. I look. I have had my head buried in draft stuff for. Yeah. For so, the last three weeks. So you're a phony so, is what you're saying. I have not looked at anything. Uh, I can support my local team. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, I have a tiger. I, the, 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 the English D is iconic. So I, th- I think I, um, when I see someone with that hat, I don't think, oh, there's a Tigers fan. I think, oh, there's someone that likes Detroit. There you go. I... um. <clears throat> I can't even tell you how much I, I how much time I spent just trying to like narrow down the list of players to get the 80 that I suggested watching and then I didn't I maybe picked half of those guys for my standout performances like where I was able to like oh this guy was in my uh, watch list so I know everything I know I need to know about him right and then there was like another like another 35 40 guys after that that i was like all right i know them but i didn't necessarily like their tape or like i just uh, i've spent way too much time watching college football and these college football players right now i don't envy you that sounds awful just looking up youtube clips all freaking day well not just that but yeah but yeah I have to have a good working relationship with YouTube. I can't yell at it when it doesn't do what I want. (laughs) I can. (laughs) Eric did use the word smooth a lot. (laughs) Just call him Santana. Can I tell you something? Mm. By the time we hit day four. Okay. (laughs) So look, I I brought these in here just so you could kind of like see my insanity right because you like you've seen how i take notes i take notes in different ways than most people right sure and so for this one what i did for for these um for these uh for these draft profiles um essentially i have like all these different color notepads right and what i'm doing is i'm trying to follow live right Mm -hmm. and so you'll see like I have like three different guys on like each tab. Mm -hmm. So I put like, so like in a position group, I'll have four notepads on. And as I'm watching these guys, I'll start identifying them and I write their name and their number. So I know when they're coming up in the rotation and then I just start taking notes. And sometimes I get to a point where I'm like, Oh, that dude looks smooth. And I just, I just put it and I'm constantly like moving between the different Parts uh-huh. where I'm just like, oh yeah, well, he looks smooth. Oh, look that I like that slide. Like, and it, so yes, I I know by the end I probably used the word smooth on like <laughs> half of the profiles that I wrote, but like that's because that's one of the traits I look for, right? right? <clears throat> I'm looking for guys that are easy movers that can, no matter what position, yeah. No matter what position, can you hear my kids yelling in the background there? I heard something, but it, a little bit. Okay, it, it didn't register like, as a, a screaming. She, she was like right outside my door and just mm. screamed. Um, <clears throat> okay, so are those uh, color coded? Do the colors mean no. certain things? No, 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 no. Because um, I use the different 
I use the different colors. Okay. <laughs> okay. I like to lay them out numerically so that I know when they're coming, when the player is coming in the rotation. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I don't want to have to like look down all the time. So I have them in colors that transition like Roy G. Biv so that I can like, without like looking down, yeah. I know that I can find a guy based on his number and based on like where he's at. Like in the flow of like, and yeah. so I can locate guys fast because if I'm trying to take live notes on 12 players all at the same time, like I have to know where that spot is to be able to jot those notes down quickly. Right. Yeah. So like so, Roy R let's say is like one through eight. Yeah. It's not as simple as that, but yeah, <laughs> but like, of course it's not it's, that it's, simple. It's, it's, <laughs> it's definitely like there's a, there's a, like, I would have like these two colors like next to each other, right? Because there's a transition. Uh -huh. So then you will see like this is 54, 58, 50, 54, 58, 59, uh -huh. right? And then like leading into it, it's 46, 48, 49. So then that transitions into that. And so like I uh -huh. know like where they are in the, and so I keep them like in front of me and they're easy and I can pull them up and I, it's just so I, 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 the insanity that is me. I tried to do it in my notepad in the past, but like, then you have to like flip pages and stuff. So now I bought like a stupid $10 Amazon, like little sticky, like basically like they're like post-it notes, but they're that big mm -hmm. um, that come with like five different colors. And I'm like, I'm just laying them out. And I've, so I have the four colors for the guys that I'm watching. And then I have a fifth one in case there's something that happens that I need to like make note of for whatever. And so, this is my, this is how I scout the, the combine. It's like a constant, where do I go with this and how do I add information down quickly in an organized fashion? You, you know yeah, why, like, oh, yeah. you know, why I absolutely love you telling your process there <laughs> and how intense and labor intensive it is. Yeah. It's because when, when these drills are happening and they cut to a person whose job it is to be evaluating these players in order to hire them, they should they cut to Aaron Glenn. What's he doing? Hey, he's just chit chatting. <laughs> hey, he's, he's just he's just he's just like, hey, what's going on? Like, oh look, I'm on the TV. Like, me meanwhile, you're just like, <laughs> I because I'm playing catch up. I'm I, I'm behind. It's like okay, there is there is a there is an, a final exam coming up next month and Air, and air glenn has been studying the whole way through and i'm like he's been I coaching for five months no but he but okay but someone okay so someone else has been giving him answers and doing his homework for him for so i am trying to cram a whole semester's worth of material into like one weekend like and i'm cramming as fast as i can <laughs> I yeah. just think I just think it's a funny juxtaposition. You're, I mean, you're right, obviously, but it's just a funny <laughs> juxtaposition that <clears throat> jumped into my mind. Um, uh, to to the person I missed it. Uh, was talking about YouTube. Yeah, we know we're not live on YouTube. There was some sort of issue when I hit broadcast. I could have sworn I picked the right thing. I think maybe it was because I went live too early. If I'm guessing, because I I had set up six oh five to give us some wiggle time and we were ready by six o'clock. So I just went live at six Oh one and maybe YouTube was like, Oh, this can't be the six Oh five stream you were talking about. We're just not going to broadcast. I don't know. Didn't make sense to me. So I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I will upload this to YouTube after we're done. So um, it'll be, it'll be up there. I just, I don't know why it didn't go live. Sorry. Um, sweaty doofus thank you for the 18 month subscribe to the channel says in honor of this anniversary Eric please talk about 2022 week 18 for screen <laughs> okay can I tell you something I have I have oh um, boy. here we go I know we have you know, well you know how we have like um we have like access to all, like every game and you can watch the all 22s and stuff like that all through that NFL plus stuff right yeah 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 so we can we can we can pull up any game at any time that we want we can buy, we can get the the, the the cutout commercials where they cut all the the baloney out right where you just have the <laughs> I still keep <laughs> I still keep um I still DVR certain games yeah 
right? In case I want to watch them on a, on a on a bigger screen because whatever, it doesn't work. My TV doesn't. It you can't get the NFL Plus on that TV. I have seven games on my on my DVR. Ooh, this don't one do, of them is still let, one of them is still 2018. The 2008. Okay, so the first 2018. One is the two, or I'm sorry, the 2022 okay. Week 18 Packers game. That's yes. one. Can we can we play a game and see if chat can guess the other ones? Sure, sure. Can I play? I mean, okay. Yeah. So so obviously Rams. Rams, of course. Yep. Okay. Liam mm-hmm. guesses Kansas City. Yep. Okay, we're at three. Three of eight. You said. So, uh, I think I have seven. Seven. Bucks. Bucks. Four. Mm-hmm. Green Bay first time this year. Sunday night football or whatever. No, Thursday night football. Yes. Yeah? Yes. That that that's that's there. <clears throat> um Vikings clinching the NFC North. Which, yes. Okay. We're doing good here, chat. Mm-hmm. Uh Char- Ooh, Chargers is an interesting one. I love the Chargers game. It's not the Chargers. Ooh. There's... Bears come back this year at home? Mm-mm. Good no. guess. Green Bay last year has already been confirmed. You're, you're going to have a hard – It's there's one left. You're going to have a hard time with it. Ooh. There used to be eight, but I just deleted one. And then there is one more left. Decker reported game? No. No. No, <laughs> that one's been deleted for a while. Yeah, um, I think I deleted that one that night. <laughs> let let me let me ask you a question. It's going to be hard for you guys to no, guess it. This um, it um, if <clears throat> have you have you rewatched the 49ers game once? Okay, yes, I rewatched it last Monday. Did you really? And then me, yep, because I wanted to hear the broadcast version of it. I didn't rewatch like the after it happened. I didn't rewatch it that that whole next week. I, I didn't want to see it. I had nothing to do. Nope. I still haven't rewatched it. <clears throat> so the Monday, but the, not this Monday, but the Monday before, I watched it uh, start to finish with the broadcast because I wanted to hear what they had to say, um, and then immediately deleted it. After that. <laughs> <laughs> I still. Cause we actually got a question in the mailbag. It was, it like, was hard. It was it was hard. Hard. That was like I remember watching that first half, and I was like, "Holy cow!" I don't remember how great how great they really were. Yeah. And then it was it was a hard second half. There was there was a a mailbag question this week. It was like it was very random, and and I understand why it was asked. It was like, "How did how did Coyote, Coyote Aushika play in the NFC Championship game?" And I'm no like, I, "We're not like I I I am not going to do the research to find out." Like, yeah. I'll give you what their P- I, what his PFF score was, but I have no idea. Yeah, unfortunately, <clears throat> I was not doing a film study. I was just watching because I wanted to rewatch the first half. I wanted to see what they had to say. I wanted to see what the yeah. build up was. I wanted to see what the commentary was because you know What's when his name is I often good, but yeah yeah I, I like curse. it's it's very fun for me to enjoy a good game yeah that I've like was in person for that. I didn't get to see like through the commentary right. the first time. It's, it's a totally enjoyed... different experience. Like I definitely yes. did that with the bucks game and, and the Rams game. Yeah. Like I, yes. and I mean, obviously yes. you just want to rewatch the game cause it's fun, but re experiencing those games through the lens of the broadcast was fascinating because we experience on an entirely different level. <clears throat> Um, the last game, you guys aren't going to get it. It's it's the second Vikings game, the Week 18 game. Oh, because my kids went to it, ah. and uh, it was a fun game. And so the kids like to see the game that they went to. Got it. And so that's a little bit. I, I, like I said, you weren't going to guess it. I don't want <clears> to <throat> belabor it out here, but yeah, I mean, I have rewatched Week 18. Oh gosh, twenty times normally, <laughs> right? <laughs> I've, I've watched the Kansas City game maybe three or four times. I don't think I've really like the Vikings. Um, the Vikings games I've watched like casually, like I've put on for the kids and stuff, or I've like I like seeing the end. But like I've watched the Bucks game, the Casey in the uh, in the Rams game 
I've watched each of those a few times. The yeah. KC game a few times. But the Week 18 game, yeah, I've watched. I used to put for like a – dude, I'm not even joking. For almost a full month yeah. after that game, my daughter would come home from school and I'd say, what do you want to watch? And she'd say football, and we'd put Week 18 on, and we would watch Week 18. Like – and we did it like every day for like a month almost, <laughs> like after school, like for real. Like I've watched that game so many times. I I don't tend to rewatch full games more than like after the week that that we're past it. But mm-hmm. I will revisit the the sights and sounds from that game in particular because it's it to me. It's honestly the best thing that the Lions have ever produced ever. Yeah, they're great. That, but I'm I'm talking that specific game. Like oh, for week eighteen, for week eighteen oh, yeah. against the Packers, I think that's the best thing they've ever made. Part, I mean, let's put it, let's put it on right now. <laughs> I'll watch you it guys. Right now. You guys got thirty <laughs> minutes. Let's do it. <laughs> I I went back and rewatched um, jeez, um, the 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 draft recap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. An hour and a half movie that Derek put <laughs> right, together. Right. My goodness. That is a time consumer. I, I like when by the it, way, they, they just put out that like mini movie, which is really good. Like I feel like I didn't I feel like no one yeah. really talked about it after it dropped. It was really good. It it I get why maybe it didn't get the attention because I think a lot of it is footage we've already seen. In fact, maybe all of it was. But right. but like there's still an art to putting it together and, and Right, Slicing telling the story. Tell story. Yeah, exactly. it was a good. It was a good. It was a good conclusion. Like yeah. they they ended it with the with the win, yeah. and then they just kind of touched on what happened. Like the whole point was, the whole the whole point of the story yeah. was, we did this and it hasn't been done in thirty years. Type of thing. That yeah. was it. You know what yep. I mean? Like, and that was, and they didn't they didn't spend too much time focusing on all the things that happened like after it because. One of them was really happy and one of them was really sad, right? But so they intend took that focus yeah. early. And I thought that was really smart. For sure. Uh, the way that they executed that. Um, but yes, anyways. I, I can't I can't say enough about the 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 week 17, 2022 20, video. Like it it gives me chills just thinking about it. And part of it is just like I think that and and don't hate me for saying this. I think part of it is just like the beauty of Lambo on a cold, uh, you know, winter night under the lights week 18. It's just like the setting is so perfect for a dramatic video like that. And I like, there are certain scenes that I'll just, I'll never forget. There's like, God, who Panay, I can't, is Decker. Is it, well, Decker's, Decker's going nuts in, in the tunnel. But yeah, there's, there, the I tunnel. think, I think Panay is just like standing there, and someone walks by, and Panay is just like, yeah, yes, yes, and he's just staring him down, mm-hmm. just absolutely. I can't. Was it was it Panay that was walking by that Rashawn Gary was no, looking Panay at? Was standing. Panay was the one standing, and yeah, Rashawn Gary was just, just like yep. death stare, and I'm just like, oh, <laughs> that gives me chills. <laughs> there, and and it, I mean like. There's also Jamal, like Jamal Williams, giving the speech mm-hmm. at the end. We 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 remember what he said to ESPN or NBC at the end of the game, but like he also reveals that he lost his, his, his one of his grandparents in the locker room. He's crying. It's it's the game where he, mm-hmm. um, you know, sets the sets the franchise the record. record against his yeah. former team. And oh god, it's mm-hmm. just it's so good. Yep, I miss Jamal. Well, I bet he misses Detroit too. Anyways, all right, let me get to the last alerts, then we should jump back into the show here. Um, Because it's, oh, God, it's almost 8 o'clock. We're almost two hours into this thing, and we've done one segment. (laughs) Well, you start getting us reminiscing, man. That's true. Away we go. Blame it on me. Fine. Um, No, I'm not blaming you. I'm I'm telling a long story. (laughs) Uh, K. Fletch, thank you for the six-month subscribe to the channel. Says, going on my third trimester. (laughs) Love when I can catch a show live. Hey. Still plenty of show left, so appreciate you dropping by here. Uh, Wasteless Fever, thank you for the 26th month. Subscribe to the channel. It says third offseason with POD, and no one does better than you guys, truly. Thank you, man. Very, very much appreciate that. We uh, we try. 
Uh, Ms. Curto, thank you for the follow. And Nicholas JP, six months subscribed to the channel, says NFL free agency so close. Can't wait. It's it's a little surreal how close it is. It doesn't feel again. It, it's like it's the sh- abridged off season for us. Like we just. I was going to say we just got done talking about the combine and free agency is here. I guess that's yeah. how it nor- normally is, right? Yeah, uh, because they pushed the season back later and yeah. it just kind of crunched <clears throat> everything in behind it, right? They gave that extra week um, when they extended the ex- the extra game. That pushed the All-Star games back. Then that pushed, you know, the Super Bowl gets pushed. Back, and it just it all just is getting kind of crunched into one little spot. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely feeling like it's all, because that I, I believe the combine got pushed back a week then, yeah. too, but the free agency doesn't, right? And so that's I, you think, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, it's honestly all I'm doing is looking at like what's coming up in the next, the next week. Yeah, in my, that's my. Can't, my we my can't look thing. further down this calendar than that. There, that's, there is going to be hard. some. That's the thing I'm kind of looking forward to is like after this first wave of free agency, there's going to be a month of free of, of breathing room there. We'll have a little bit of like the beginning of, of workouts, off season workouts at the beginning of March or beginning of April. We'll have owners meetings at the end of March. Um, someone asked, I will be down there for those. Um, part of the reason why I'm going to be in Florida. Um, I'm going to be down there for a while. So streams are going to look a little different during that time because i won't have my home set up so just be aware of that okay (sighs) all right ready to get back into it yeah we better we won't finish all right where did i leave off we did that one okay is daylight savings time this weekend Ugh. The bad one to <laughs> spring forward. Dang it. But that means it'll be lighter outside later? Is that right? Earlier. Isn't it? It'll be lighter. It'll be lighter earlier, but also later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait. Well, that's what happens when the summer happens. Yeah. When yeah. it's summer, the sun's closer, and so you get longer periods of day because, you know, the earth yeah. is on an angle, right? Okay. <laughs> no, we're not. We're not doing this. <laughs> it'll be lighter outside later. Into the, yeah. Okay. I had it right. Yeah, but okay. It will be. It, it will. Be, it's starting to get brighter earlier as well. <laughs> All right, here we go. <clears throat> and we are back here on the midweek mailbag podcast as we get ready for free agency and do a little bit of NFL combine recap. And that's where we're going to start here in the second segment here. Uh, our next question comes from Costa at Gus, the Greek on Twitter asks after watching the combine last week, and I'm really loving this O line and cornerback class. Why do I see so many Lions fans wanting to trade for guys like Lattimore or Snead? You can have Darrell Revis playing corner for us and it really won't matter. Why aren't we talking more about signing guys like Christian Wilkins, Bryce Huff, Josh Uche, Van Ginkle, isn't it more imperative to fix the pass rush first rather than giving up draft capital for big name corners? I do think uh, there's a focus on the defensive line more from the team than I think what we talk about in the media right now. Um, my guess on their approach is that they're going to spend the money on the corners and maybe draft like those defensive linemen. Right. Um, They've met with a couple of defensive tackles. They've met with a couple of edge rushers. Now they've met with corners as well, but um, you tend to get a better return on your, uh, on your finances and your investment. If you're getting the defensive linemen on those rookie deals, as opposed to like a corner. And so it just, a lot of, and I think the value lands there as well. Like the at that spot that they're at, there's going to be some defensive linemen that that are going to be real valuable 
uh, that they that fit in with what they want to do. So, whereas I think there's some more question marks about corners, even though there are really good corners that I that I like. The way we've talked about it all off season, adding a a veteran corner through free agency, and then drafting a guy you can develop. That doesn't mean you have to develop that guy that you drafted 29 like that 20 pick 29 can go to a defensive lineman you can get a corner at a different spot and so if again i'm I, brad has fooled me in the past with what he does in the first round but my guess is it seems like defensive line makes a lot of sense and you spend on the corner in, in, in free agency um that's my gut today Next week, maybe totally different. But yeah, that's my gut today. No, I, I, I kind of, I go back and forth with this question because I do think we can't necessarily overvalue pass rush versus coverage one over the other. I know, I know this has been an ongoing debate in like the analytics community, like which one is more important, coverage or pass rush. You get a different answer from ten different people. I think the Lions could stand to improve both, but I think the reason why Lions fans and draft analysts and all have been pointing to corner over defensive line is the Lions just don't have playable players right now at corner. They just don't. Right. They 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 have no depth there at all. We're not. They have Cameron Sutton and a whole bunch of names. That's it. At outside corner, well, I don't even know if it's a whole bunch. Yeah. Right. It, yeah. It's it's yeah, and a couple of names. Um. So they, they really need to attack that hard. When you talk about the defensive line, the Lions have pieces there. They have guys that that, ha, that have starting experience there. They have Aiden. They have Aline. They have Josh Paschal. They have John Kaminsky. They now, invested in Broderick Martin. They Right. And and I think part of the issue I take with like the Lions have to get a defensive tackle, they have to get an edge rusher, is... We don't know where they stand on Josh Pascal. We don't know where they stand on Broderick Martin. Now, th- they're going to add bodies to that room. They'll probably I wouldn't be surprised to see them re-sign a guy or two. Like Benito Jones, to me, sounds like a guy that they'll probably bring back very similarly to, to how they brought back um, the guy the guy that they cut. Um, Isaiah Bugs. Isaiah Bugs, exactly. Um, but, like, it, how do they view Josh Pascal right now? Do they view him as a guy can, that can start? They certainly invested enough in him to believe that that could be in his future. And he's entering that like pivotal year three where we've seen some jumps. What do they think of Levi? Is Levi a guy that they view as part of the rotation next year? Or are they view him as a guy that could be cut in training camp? There's so many, there there, there are bodies there, but just a lot of unknowns from the outside. We don't know what they think of these players. And so to me, that's why everyone is pointing. They have to get a corner. They don't have guys that can start there right now. They have guys that can start on the defensive line. You just you hope they upgrade on the defensive line. It's not a matter of upgrading the cornerbacks room. They need to fill out the cornerbacks room. I push back a little bit on the defensive tackle spot because I really don't feel like they have a starter next to Aleem. Um, I do think they have depth, but I do think there is a clear clear need for a starter um i do agree it's not as pressing <laughs> as corner yeah and corner just doesn't have a starting need it has a depth need as well right, right. which is the whole point you're the whole point you're making yes um but i do want to acknowledge the fact that i do think defensive tackle is being dismissed a little bit the edge is definitely upgrading right the edge you do have bodies it's definitely uh, you're talking about upgrading at that point but defensive tackle is a is is a need that I I think they need to be paying attention to, or and, and I do think maybe we don't talk about it enough um, because. But I think one of the reasons we don't talk about it enough is because they haven't. Brad Holmes hasn't paid attention to it that much, right? Well, like it's been one of the it, it's uh, it's been one of the. I mean, he 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 double he he double drafted guys in the first draft, yeah, and then. He didn't do anything in year two. And then in year three, he drafted a developmental guy in year uh, in the third round. Right. But they knew he was going to be a developmental guy. And so from a free agency standpoint, the only guys that they've signed have been guys that were either cut. Yeah. Or aging. Um, They they got Benito off the waiver wire. Right. They got Isaiah Bugs basically not off the waiver wire, but he was cut from Pittsburgh. Right. Um, 
Alualu was uh, just sitting around because he was waiting for the right opportunity. Like they haven't actually invested a in a free agent defensive tackle in three years. They've they've just they've drafted a couple guys and they picked up a couple scrap heap guys. So I think that's why it's not getting that much attention from the media is because Brad Holmes hasn't really paid that much attention in free agency. I guess my argument would be. Haven't, hasn't it worked out kind of okay, though? Because to me, if you're talking about a starter next to a lean, the Lions would prefer probably a nose tackle capable of two-gapping. And they've gotten decent enough play out of Bugs, mm-hmm. out of Benito, out of Alu-Alu. Hell, number one run rate, rated run defense by, by DVOA last year. And then when it comes okay. to obvious passing downs, what do they do, Eric? They kick Kaminsky. Well, they or they Yeah. And so they have the is, bodies, but like, okay. go ahead. Well, the question I have is, is it's, it's the kicker s- scenario all over again. Are they not kicking 50 yard field goals because they don't have a kicker or because they're more aggressive? Are they only using Pascal inside because they don't have another option or are they doing that on purpose? Like, yeah. that's what I think we don't know. True. And, and I agree. It's been working great from a run defense standpoint. Correct. But you want an ass kicker. From a pass rushing yes. standpoint, yes, you, it's barren. Right, like there's nothing. Right, and I think that's why a guy like, uh, like Newton from Illinois, is very intriguing sure. to me at pick twenty nine. If he gets there, he yeah. is. He's a pass rusher. He's the second best run def- run defender in this class behind a three hundred and sixty six pound behemoth sure. out of Texas. <laughs> yep, like that dude's he's massive. Yes, they, like Sweat is 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 this massive run defender, of course. <laughs> yeah, he's, but he's not a pass rusher. He's got a little bit of pass rush juice, but not much. As Whereas much as a three hundred and sixty six pounder can. <laughs> right, Murphy is an elite pass rusher, but yep. she, in the run defense is is good. But Newton is that perfect balance of both. Yeah, he's a he's at, he's one of the top. He's a really good uh, pass rusher. He's also a really good run defender, and he's got that. And and a guy like that is something that they've never had to a uh, to join a lean, right? right? And if you have that, how much does that free up guys like Kaminsky and Pascal and stuff like that? Yeah. Right? So, and I think. I think it's a fair point to make too, because I think their investment in Levi owns Arike originally proves that they value that because that that's what they yes. wanted. out of like that. That's what the hope of what Levi was going to be is that guy that can give you interior pass rush and also be a good run defender. It just never worked out that way. Mm-hmm. My guess. I don't know. There's <sighs> Brad Holmes can go so many different ways. Yeah. Right. And I think everyone agrees it's probably like 95% going to be defense, which is, but there's still that 5% that he's like, ha, ha fooled you. Wide receiver. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, or, or guard. I mean, there's, there's sure. going to be a litany of guards. Guards yep. are going to be so plentiful at 29. I, it's yeah. awesome. But they're also going to be there in the second and third round as well. Right. Um, but, yeah, there's some fun defenders in this class. And like and my logic says they want they want to add some interior pass rush because the idea of pushing Pascal and Kaminsky inside and getting an interior pass rush from those defensive ends, it hasn't really come to fruition. True. You know what I mean? Like yeah. and, and I don't know if it has. And if it hasn't that changes the type of edge you're looking for too. Right now, if you add like if you had, let's say you had Newton at, at 29, now you have more of a a, a uh, edge setting run defender at defensive end. Are you going to want to try and add a guy like Chop Robinson, or are you going to try and stick with what you know and add, or maybe look like at a guy like you know Darius, Darius Robinson. Robinson? Again, yeah. you're, you're yeah. probably not going to get either one of those guys and Newton. But right. my point is. is I'm talking stylistically. What right. type of guy are you looking for? Or are you going to try and find, finally find that Sam that they couldn't find last year? Sure. And try and get a Sam like and 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 add that level guy. Like, because if they went Newton and then a, and then added a Sam in, in in round two, like it wouldn't surprise me at all. So they can go a lot of different ways. The trick for us as projectors, they've changed their defensive scheme. 
every sing- in the middle of every single season. <laughs> right. And so we don't know which way they're going. Right. We don't know so if don't that's know out of necessity in the halfway of the season or if that's the trajectory of where they're going in the future. Exactly. Okay. So like we we're we have to end up naming all these guys and all these possibilities because we no one knows. Who knows what they're going to They do. might not know. Oh, I got a feeling they I got a feeling they know. Maybe, but, but like but at the same time Brad Holmes' whole draft strategy is let's draft dudes and figure it out. And so part of it is like, I think if they just like this guy better than another guy, it's not, they're not doing it in mind of like, do we need a, a, a pass rushing phenom like a chop Robinson? Or do we need an edge setter? Like it's just, do we like Darius Robinson better? Or do we like chop Robinson better? I don't know. It's, it's tricky. Um, but let's let's move on so we can yeah, move this well, conversation. Well, well, hold on. Hold okay, on. fine. Which of the Robinsons do you like more, Chop I, or Darius? I had a very long conversation about this on on yesterday's podcast. Oh, oh all right, all right. But all right. I'll, the, I'll the sh- go watch it. The short answer is part of me wants them to start adopting more of an emphasis on pass rush, and I think Chop Robinson is kind of has the potential the elite traits to be an elite pass rusher. And so I'm kind of leaning that way. But if, if you're asking me which one I think the lines are going to like better, I think it's Darius. Okay. The tournament. All right. All right. Uh, next question here. Thoughts from my couch asks, which prospect is a realistic trade up target in round one? And who's a realistic oh. prospect in a trade down scenario? Now I think trade up is a little bit easier to identify here because we, we have a better idea of who's going off the board early. The tricky part with yeah. the trade down is you, you have less of an idea who's going to be who's there at 29. There. Yeah. So I tell you, if they're, if they're trading up, it's probably for offensive line. You think so? Loaded in but, offensive line. But that not that a reason why to not trade up? Because you can wait and get a dude? There's, if you take, if you take, if you trade it up for either uh, Fuaga from Oregon State. God, I love Fuaga. Or, uh, or, uh. Uh, Fatanu from uh, Washington. Yep. Both of those guys are instant starters yeah. at guard or tackle. And if your plan is not to extend Taylor Decker, this is both of those guys you trade up, they're plug and play guards and they're plug and play right tackles the following year. Yeah. And you're, and you are, and you have locked down two positions in the interim and in the long term. So both of those guys are are trade up options for me in my mind. Like you're probably going to trade up into like the teens yeah. or, you know what I mean? Or right. maybe early twenties if something happens, cause there's going to be a lot of pure tackles that are going to go too. But like, if you're in my mind, if you're trading up, you're trading up for a talent that is going to be an elite prospect that can handle business now and later for you in the future. Both those guys do it. I could, I could see them trade up maybe for a corner that they right. fall in love with. That's I that's where I was going to take the conversation. Okay. And and this and, and, but that's it. Those if that's that's like it. Right. I don't see them trading up for like an edge or a defensive tackle. I agree. That would be it. I agree. Go ahead. Um no, I I wanted to to talk about corner because shout out to Damian Smith on YouTube who who donated in our last stream and I didn't get to his question which was if you if you were going to trade up would you would you do it for a corner or a guard? And to me, two the, the two reasons I would pick corner is is you're not going to like my first reason. And first reason is positional value. Sorry. It still matters to me. Corner is a, sure. is, is a scarcer resource in this league. And so if you can go up and get an elite one, go up and get an elite one guard. We just talked about it. It's an abundant resource, really both in free agency and in the draft this year. The, I made a list mm-hmm. of 13 dudes out there that I think could potentially start in this league that are free agents. You listed 12 dudes from the combine who balled the hell out um, that, that are going to be available. And so, I, I agree with you. Like there are some r- guys I really, really love that are going to go in the top 15 at, at guard at tackle. And, and I, it, it sucks that the lines aren't picking there um, in a way because it does fit a need so much. And there's a couple guys that you just absolutely know this team is going to fall in love with, but they can be patient there. And we know Brad can play the board relatively well. We know he mm-hmm. knows when, when players are going to go. And so to me, it's like be a little patient. You might not get your first or second choice, but that's that's the price of doing business when you're making NFC Championship games. You're going to have to get used to being a little bit more patient than you normally are. But if you don't I, want to be patient, go get a corner. Go get Quinn <laughs> Mitchell. Go get go I, get Toledo Rocket. 
if you think if you think one of these guys is a year two pro bowler, then you can then you can go get him. And you can justify going to get him, right? I suppose. Like they traded up from like twenty nine, it wasn't twenty nine, but whatever, like from thirty two. Yep. Right? Was it thirty two that they traded to twelve yep. to get a guy? Well to get a guy they knew wasn't, gonna wasn't play. going to play or even be a project. They're like, this guy's going to be a project all of year one. He's not even going to play until the end of the season. He's barely going to play. Year two is even going to be kind of a learning curve for him. But, like, we're going to trade up 20 spots to get this guy who probably isn't going to pay off until year three. <laughs> we're going to trade up for him. And they're 20 in a be- spots in the they're first in a, round. They're in a better spot to do that now. Like, arguably, you shouldn't right. have been doing that two years ago because you're like, you need all the picks you can get. Your team sucks. Now you're well, like they took a hit. They took advantage of Big Brain over there and in uh, Minnesota, <laughs> and they got it. And they they got an advantage, right? Yeah. And so they ended up getting good a good draft value for it. So like, yeah. Here's the thing. If it. he's going to do that, if he's going to trade up for a guy that he doesn't think he'll get return on until year three, why do, he absolutely is going to trade up for a guy he's going to get a oh, return for him immediately. I am not. I hundred percent. Listen, I'm being very clear right now. I am not putting it past Brad Holmes to jump into the first half of the first round in this draft. And imagine, imagine what the Detroit crowd would look like when they're just like, they're all just twiddling their thumbs waiting for 29 to come. And suddenly 14 (laughs) pops up on the low and and the Lions logo gets smacked. And the announcer says the Lions have traded for pick 14. Everyone goes nuts. Like be for great, great drama. I, I, you know how I feel about trade ups, but, but if he lands one of these guys that, that I'm starting to fall in love with, I get it. I do get it. And and I, and he's earned my level of trust if he go, goes and does that. So, um, All right. We got two more here. Uh, we're going to try to lightning around these as, as much as we can physically can, which is no. we, we're not capable of it, but we're going to try. <laughs> uh, all lines go to heaven, a.k.a. at the Fox Magnet on Twitter asks, Mahomes signed a 10-year deal. Could the Lions do something similar with their foundation pieces like St. Brown or Sewell? Why don't we see more longer extension deals even like seven or eight years? They could. Um, You typically don't see it because of what you see happening with the salary cap, a growing at this abundant rate. Mm -hmm. You typically don't want the agents aren't going to want players to get locked in in a ever growing market like that. So they want you to get to your second or third contract yep. in order to, you know, adjust to the, uh, the growing, you know, salary cap. So if you were going to do it, you would need to have similar incentives built into it. Like you'd have to have a huge signing bonus You'd have to be able to have it like um, like a huge number assigned to it that can be so that you can manipulate the contract as the cap changes like they're doing with Mahomes every year. They're readjusting this contract. Um, So the so we don't see as many of those is because that's typically the strategy. Get these guys to second, third. Like if Sewell follows this path of like you know, every couple of years or every like, you know, four or five years, he could see like four contracts, like big contracts. Like that's like an insane number. I could also see them say, look, we want to make it, you know, you, you, we want to be creative with you and try and introduce something different. Like one of the things agents have pushed for in the past is um, percentages. Like you make, your base salary is a percentage of the cap right? as opposed to like setting it at a number. Teams are more hesitant to get into that, right? Because they don't want that flexible. They want to know what they're we're walking into you know, next year and the year down the road. Right. They don't want to. And so, so there's, there's more hesitation from the team standpoint to add those incentives. There's less hesitation. There's more hesitation from the, from the player standpoint, because they don't want to get locked into this evolving market. Yeah, and then also from the team side in general, like, yeah, you you don't know what the future holds. Panay Sewell seems like he's going to be an amazing dude for the next decade, but injuries happen. Plans that the best laid plans go to waste, right? And so, lock, a, a team locking into a, a ten year deal with a player, and one catastrophic injury happens, and you're stuck. 
And so, like, you did a good job, I think, detailing why players don't like it. I think that's probably one of the main reasons why teams aren't in a hurry to, to do that sort of thing. All right, we nailed that one quickly. Last one here, and I think this is a great question. Uh, MNUFC, our good friend here on Twitch as well, uh, asked, I went back and listened to the reaction podcast to the Holmes and Campbell hirings, and the reaction was mixed at the time. What concerns that you had then have now been answered, and are there any lingering questions that you had three years ago that you still feel haven't been answered? Well, I was not on those podcasts because when that happened, would, I was at I was at the other organizations. So. Just you were uh, you were almost hired. You, there were talks. Yeah, we were in the legal tampering period of bringing you over here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't make my way over until ooh, February, yeah, something like, like mid February. So about a month um, there. But yeah, I mean, let's let's talk about okay. Right. So like, what were your so initial? You tell me concerns? what your concerns okay. were. Oh, good. No, I, my initial concern with Campbell, I think I gave a very fair answer at the time. I'd have to go back and look to see if my memory is as it is. But I think my my main concern is like, all right, can he hire a good staff? Because I didn't like it was hard to read what his philosophy was. We we pretty much knew from the onset he probably wasn't going to be a play caller on either side of the ball. So how how can he do in surrounding himself for, with the staff? And I think very early he answered that question and saying like, oh, yeah, he's pretty good at it. Like, mm-hmm. I have expressed some doubts a little bit about the defensive staff recently and, and how much they've had to cycle through that, particularly in the secondary. But overall, I've been very impressed with his connections with, I mean, we're already starting to talk about like Dan Campbell trees and things like that. And so with Dan Campbell, that was my primary concern. I think maybe a little bit of my tertiary, tertiary or secondary concerns were but there's there's two more. One was I wasn't sure he was going to be modern enough in his approach. Little too leaning heavily on run game, which he has, but also into that I, I thought maybe he was just gonna play conservative play style. I thought he wasn't gonna go for it on the third down. I I think he was asked early on, like that whole down two touchdowns late in the game and you score a touchdown, are you gonna go for two or are you gonna kick an extra point? At the time he said he was gonna kick an extra point, I'm like, uh oh. This guy, this guy doesn't go with <laughs> analytics. Obviously, that has been blown out of the water. I, I, I do think there's a little bit of over-reliance on the run game on both sides of the ball. And then my last concern with Dan Campbell, and now I'm starting to forget what it was. I don't know. Tell me tell me my, your, my, in, your initial reactions on both guys. Yeah, my biggest concern was that he wasn't a coordinator before, mm-hmm. and so he lacked experience on, like, one side of the ball. Yeah. Uh, I liked his, I liked his, the fact that he was a former player. Um, I liked the fact that he was a, a player's coach. I thought those things uh, resonated with me, especially coming from this coaching staff that we were coming from. And, uh, but it did, it, it did raise some concerns because typically what you see is NFL teams looking to hire the best and the brightest mind that is, that is in the building or that's, you know, out in the league at that time. Sure. And so um, that was a concern of mine. It was, I was like, I don't know how well he knows offense because he's never called it. I don't know how well he knows defense because he's never really exp- had to coach that. And so I, it was, it was, that was more of my concern was that experience. Yeah. Uh, little do I, did I know, like, you know, as you start digging in more, you're like, all right, he's got connections and this and that. But like, I didn't, I took for granted the fact that Bill Parcells was his mentor and like he he's been studying under Sean Payton for half a decade. You know what I mean? Like I didn't think about those things until after the fact. Right. Right. Um, But yeah, so like those were my initials was this is a big guy who's going to be very old school and uh, and he's going to people players are going to like him, but we're never going to see an elite offense. We're never going to see an elite defense because He's more of like a player's coach than, you know, any an, an expert in any one area. It turns out he's an expert in a lot of areas. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he took uh, over play I, calling for a half a season and they improved. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, so I think I discounted his intelligence, which was a, a big mistake on my but part. But also a very common one, right? Like there are still yeah, people that, that, that think he's a caveman. I think he's a meathead. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's it's Yeah. The, How? I don't understand anymore, but right. so, yeah. The the other concern that I had was that this was an overcorrection in terms of culture. 
right? Mm-hmm. Because you went from from Jim Caldwell, I, players coach, okay with that. to authoritarian, and now you're going like way back yeah. in the other direction to players coach. And I'm at the time I, I've I've actually changed my belief on this because of Dan Campbell. At the time, I was like, you can win with either. You can have an authoritarian and and lead a good team, or you can have a guy who who relates to the players and buddy buddies with them and all that sort of stuff. I don't care which one. I don't think you need to play this game where you bounce back and forth with what, if one doesn't work, let's try the other. I've changed. I think, I think in terms of how the culture of, of our youth is in terms of how you're seeing the landscape of the NFL change and going to more players coach. I think having a guy like Dan Campbell who can relate to the players on a very basic former player level is such an important thing. It's huge. Mm-hmm. And I underestimated that at the time because I thought yeah. I thought culture was honestly a BS term that was like, whatever is working, whatever wins, that's the right culture. I I don't believe that anymore. I think I think the Lions are are in the right quadrant when you come to when it comes to building the right kind of culture that leads to wins, that leads to harmony, that leads to leadership, that leads to players want to coming in, want to come in and win a championship here. And so that that's that's the biggest change that I've made because of Dan Campbell. Now, Brad Holmes, mm-hmm. Brad Holmes is an interesting one. Cause I don't think I came in with a lot of perceived notions. I think like when, when a general manager hire happens, you either know him because he's been a former GM or you know almost nothing about him and you're just reading everything about him. And so because he wasn't a former GM, I guess that's probably where your main concern comes in. But like also, do you want to, there was also the, the notion of like, do you really want a retread GM, a GM that got fired? Well, like the big name was, uh, Thomas Dimitrioff. Right? Dimi- yeah. Like, for, yep. yeah, Dimitrioff from the uh, Falcons. Right? right. Like that was a guy I thought, Oh, that makes a ton of sense to bring him in. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to interject there. No, no, that, and I, I don't know if I really have any other points. Cause I don't think. I don't think I have a, 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 a had a main concern about Brad Holmes going into. It. I was just kind of like, I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> like mm-hmm. the Rams obviously drafted very good players for for a very long time, but also like even in the draft where you're like, oh, this guy helped with Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald wasn't their first pick in the draft. <laughs> no, it was Greg Robinson. It was Greg Robinson um, who was not very good. <laughs> um, I. I think for me, it was, there was a lot of naivety on my part because we'd only other, we'd we'd only other other GM hire we'd gone through from outside the organization was Bob Quinn mm-hmm. because they Mayhew came from within the organization like he was promoted True. because he was already there right so like we never really experienced what we never had to like look into or, or like figure out what are they doing when they're looking for a GM? Basically the hiring process went like this. Hey, the Patriots are good. Who do they like? Oh, you like him? Let's <laughs> right. hire Ernie Accorsi right. and have him get, tell us who is like popular. And he comes back and says, Oh, a lot of people like this Bob Quinn fella. All right. Well, Ernie Accorsi signs off on him. He's helped, you know, build, a lot of uh, you know organizations in the past will just go with him, like, and so I don't think we th- had to think too much about it. So yeah. like I was looking at it, and I was almost like maybe leaning towards the retread. I was looking for, I was when I was looking at my guys, like my research, I was looking at like assistant GMs because again, it's like hiring a coordinator. Like you want yep. somebody who's been in in the thick of it, understanding multiple facets of what it takes to run an organization, and so. With Brad Holmes, I was thinking, okay, he's good at the draft, but what else can he do? Like, what else is, where else is his, his experience? And so, again, <clears throat> my own naivety kind of discounting him yeah, and, and, and kind of putting him in a little box that I thought this makes sense. And I don't, because I don't know otherwise. And then, again, we get proved for our inexperience or our lack of knowledge about that. And now they've op- he's opened my eyes to, man, Dave Sears is going to be really good uh, in an assistant GM role in Arizona yeah. because, uh, you know, and then, um, and then uh, the Washington hires away. Oh my God. I'm blanking on his name. Uh, another, another, uh, you know, front office member. And you're like, Oh, that makes yeah. sense because this is what his role was. Right? right. And like, 
So he's made me look in, into like what the different roles are, how they're how they're utilized in the front office, and like he's really. I think Brad maybe has opened my eyes to more than Dan has, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, because Dan, I think, was he definitely bucked the trend of uh, of what was you know what the uh, you know NFL was hiring at the time. But now I, I agree with you. The NFL is absolutely following suit, and um, and so yeah. Now now Lance Newmark. There you go. Is uh is gonna do well in uh in Washington, and I think, like I understand what his role in Detroit was better, and then because of that, I understand how he'll have a better shot to help Washington elevate there. Like, so Brad's experience forced me to look harder at what the front office does. Yeah, and it's crazy like the intricacies and the levels and you know it's it's when we talk about it like when we start talking about front office and i go on my little like tirades about like all the different guys and what they like it's yeah it's because there's like this whole nother world like behind, yeah. behind the curtain it's it's the, like it's the wizard of oz like don't look you look behind the curtain and you're like holy there's a whole nother world back here it is but the, the, a part but the, the but. tricky part is you just don't you don't know how those neurons work together. You don't know who's doing what necessarily because it's all happening behind the scenes. Um, well, it's, it's listening and talking to people and sure. you're, you're, you, and you absolutely, it's not in the, it's not in front of you like right. it is with Dan Campbell. Right. right? For, for sure. Yeah. But you learn how the crossover works yeah. and you learn how like, and so I, I'm, I'm fascinated by it. Yeah. I will say, when I, I don't remember when this story got leaked to the media about Brad Holmes, but there's a story about how they how they found him, right? Like it was was it Lance Newmark or no? It was Disner. It was Disner. He just like Disney. he pops in this random tape of 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 Brad Holmes like explaining what he does and 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 his aspirations and something, and like you got to see this guy, like. That that story can go one of two ways. That story can be like, wow, the Lions just found this random guy that enamored them and it <laughs> and it blows up in their face. Like it's it's you know, they're uh the the running back that they yell at the back of the draft room moment under under Millen. <laughs> Why do I always forget yeah. that guy's name? It could blow up like that, or it could be like this awesome story where like, wow, they they uncovered every stone and they found this diamond in the rough. And so when I heard that story, part of me was like is this going to be good? Like, is this a good story or is this a bad story? Uh, Brian Calhoun, well, there you go. Um, well, I mean, look, it's not like Disner just pulled that name out of a hat. Like right. somebody had to have handed it to him, right? Like, and, sure. and there's, there, right. So like they were looking for a pool of people and, and that name came across Disner's desk and Disner found something and then that, yeah. the, the light bulb kind of switched on, right? And so that happens with players that happened with Colby Sorstel. True. Like that's how they ended up with Colby. True. When someone went, Oh, look at this tape that nobody's looked at yet. Yeah. And they were like, Oh, look, it's actually pretty good. Right. The other thing I want to say though, is like when, when it comes to what questions have not been answered yet, I, th I think it's fair to say with Brad Holmes, like it's fair to want a little bit more out of free agency. It's fair. To, like well, in terms now of the that he has money, thing. now that yeah. he has money is what can he do with it? Agreed. Can he yes. maintain a totally different roster? Like it's one yes. thing to build the roster, but yep. it's totally different to maintain it. Yes. So we've seen him. We've seen. Look, if Brad Holmes wants, if if if, if it doesn't work out in Detroit and he leaves, and he'll he can build another organization up from the ground. We know he can do that. Right. Can he maintain it? That That's is the biggest challenge in front of him. Agreed. And and there's been there's been some minor swings and minor misses in free agency. There's been some minor swings and minor hits in free agency. Now, it's now, NFL. now becomes it's the, the the trickiest part where you have to maintain, you have to continue to get better, and at some point, you're probably going to take a big swing or two, a, a a significant swing or two. We know there's there's a little bit of less need in him where he's not necessarily going to say f them picks, but he's not going to stray too far from that either. At some point, he's going to see a guy out there that he knows that he really really likes in free agency or via trade, and he's going to go get him. And it's hitting on those. That are that's going to elevate this team from Super Bowl contender to Super Bowl winner. It's a, it's just a totally different approach, right? Because he's going to miss. Like, there's, sure. there's, 
because it's not always him too. Like he's getting mm-hmm. information from his staff and his, you know what I mean? Like, um, so he's going to miss. And I I'd say his, his free agency has been more misses than he, yeah. what we've seen in the draft by yep. a lot. No question. Right. Because the draft is something he knows you yeah. know, intimately. He's right. done it for years and years and years. Um, so there's, there, he's going to miss. Of course. The, the, I think the strategy that he has, though, is I'm not going to invest too big because if I miss, I don't want it to cripple me. Of course. And that's why I think we've seen these more subdued contracts with him, whereas the last couple of GMs, they've been like, here's a bag, come play for us. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. I don't think Brad has to do that anymore. Like he's he can he can give a bag to the guys that he knows are gonna that are homegrown that he picked like if he picked the guy in the draft and they're working out he knows they're working out he knows they're good he give them the bag yeah and and then he i mean he's basically spelled all of this out like he's he said it to us that is his strategy the thing is is i think we don't believe him because that's not how the nfl operates at the same time He's looked the NFL in the eye and said, "I'm gonna. I don't care what you think, and I'm gonna do the opposite. <laughs> I'm gonna do it my way. I think. Yeah, and it's worked. It has. So I don't know why we don't believe him. I think we <laughs> ap- th- honestly. I I I'm changing my mind on free agency right now in front of everyone. Like, you never. You <laughs> never wanted Jalen Johnson, anyways. Go ahead and franchise yeah, no, Bears. No. Why was I even? Why was I even thinking that? <laughs> my goodness. Like, <laughs> I think. Look, in my mind, I'd love to have a – like, everybody wants a shiny new toy, yeah. right? Like, everybody wants somebody – that you spend the money, you bring the guy in. I, your I, your I shiny new toys is, come in late April, not in early March. <laughs> this That's is one that – uh, this is – we're going to get a re-gift from uh, – we're going to get this re-gift <laughs> present instead that doesn't cost as much that, uh, you know, we bought <laughs> off eBay. That It's still new to us, and we're really going to like it. But it's, you know <laughs> – it's it's just it's it's a little cheaper that's all uh and it's not and if it comes and it's it's you know got a little you know a couple problems with it that's okay we're we'll, we'll be all right because we've got enough we got a bunch of other fun toys that we that we get to play with that we've invested in all right <laughs> we've we're off the rails here uh as expected we went super long on that segment too so with that we are going to say adieu uh until next time. I mean, I'm not sure if we're going to have a midweek mailbag in the middle of the chaos of next week of free agency. Maybe, maybe not. Um, we will have some probably emergency podcasts along the way as lines make moves. Um, we will still do our uh, our call-in show this weekend, Saturday mornings, on twi- Twitter Spaces. So make sure you join us for that if you want to ask us more questions. We're going to have a free agency preview podcast as well. So plenty of content coming your way in video form, in audio form. Make sure you're following us on all of those platforms. But until then, for Eric, I'm Jeremy. Thank you all for listening. It's chaos. Be kind. Recording stopped. We could do a midweek mailbag uh, next week uh, if people just want to watch us write an article. Because I guarantee. <laughs> this is the minute we hit record. <laughs> that's 100% what would happen. And we'd just be like, all right, they, re- they this is who they signed. Right. Um, all right. Let's hang out for a little bit, but probably not too long here because both of us are currently underfed. <laughs> my, uh, my daughter is, uh, going to bed here soon too. Okay. Yeah. So we won't right. stay too at, long at the adjoining uh, wall over here, but she's good. She she's, <clears throat> she'll, oh, she'll God. be in bed or she'll be, she won't be asleep for a little bit. I'm, I'm just realizing cause like I'm, I'm not good at keeping time and, and, I know Chris always like has has a timer on her. I never do that because honestly, like I just want our conversations to end naturally and not not give you like the hurry up sign and all that sort of stuff. So I'm like I'm like all right, if we can just like keep it to thirty minutes, two thirty minute segments is fine. And I'm looking now at an alert that I know happened. I know I'm looking now at the alert that that I know happened at the beginning of that segment, and it's forty minutes ago. And so I'm like, oh god, we just went forty minutes. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, it's fine. And yeah, I'll do Macho Man for the free agency pod. Sorry, I I didn't. Did you respond to me when I initially said that? Because I totally missed it if you did. Uh, but thank you for the question and thank you for yeah. I'll I'll try to remember for the free agency pod. Um, Nick the Greek, thank you for the one bit who said, "Who the hell is Gus the Greek?" <laughs> I'm sorry. There's there's other Greek people out there asking us Lions questions. Don't 
Don't feel like you're being infringed upon. Um, Woodchuck Hunter 100 Bits says, Eric, the sun is actually farther away during the summer, but the tilt of the Earth axis means the northern hemisphere gets more direct sunlight and more daylight. Going back to a conversation we had. (laughs) And Brad's home. Thank you for the follow. I I like the name. You moved the S. Um, to avoid giving up draft capital in any potential trade trade ups, are there any potential trade candidates on the roster? Ooh, I haven't even thought about that. I know someone threw out Derek Barnes. I think it was a, uh, I think it was Ledyard in the uh, in the newsletter today. I think he threw out. I don't, but I don't think I like that. I get it, it's you know what it's tricky because. It, I, I understand his thoughts behind trading a guy like Derek Barnes. He's on the, if I'm not mistaken, he's on the final year of his deal. Yeah. You, you essentially at some point are going to want Jack Campbell to take over that job full time. Mm-hmm. And so I get it, but it's also a talented guy that you could probably resign for relatively cheap. I don't think, I don't think Derek Barnes has like earned a $8 million a year contract. I don't know. That's a tricky one. I don't see a piece that's valuable enough that I'd also be willing to part with it. The only way I would consider like a John Kaminsky is if they're changing like their defensive front scheme. Yeah. Other than that, and like, and he has that contract. But beyond Kaminsky, I think they need the guys that they have, and they have the guys in place that they want. Um, right. I don't, I don't think there's really. I don't think anybody would trade. I don't think they trade Anzalone. Oh, they yeah. rely on him way too much. He's he's a massive leader for them. And I don't, I don't think you could get more than like a sixth round pick for Malcolm. So I don't think that's worth it. I mean, you, you have a guy that could be a special teamer for life in Malcolm that could also play a little defense for you. And it's costing you essentially nothing right now. Right. So Derek Barnes to me is like the only tradable piece. And I don't, I don't really get why you would do it. I no, that's not true. I get why you would do it. I just don't, I think like that's extra. I think you're overthinking it. You have good depth. Why mess with it? Yeah, they're in the process of like trying to add more substantialness to the roster. Right, I, don't, right. I don't think. I don't think there's like there's not there's not anybody who's like again the only contract that is a little bloated is Kaminsky. Right. And I don't think you get any kind of return that you'd want from him he's not going to like the the trade value you'd get for him wouldn't be like a pivotal a pivotal um yeah i added some a's in there um or b yeah a b in there as well um (laughs) it's not like you're trading up from from 29 to 12 just because you throw in a Derek barnes or a kaminsky right or both yeah you're 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 talking day three picks if that for any of those guys <clears throat> um, dark dark elf. I don't think the re- careful. I don't think the returns were careful. Uh-oh. I don't know if you were here yesterday for my my rant on the the stupid JMO talk that stemmed from one Chiefs Twitter account, but I don't want to get into it again. You saw that, right, Eric? Um, I saw some weird like rumor or i saw i saw some people commenting yes about trading so i assume you're talking about uh, the chiefs were someone suggested trading for jmo or something yes yeah, like a, a sneed for jmo straight up it was one it was <clears throat> i said i wasn't gonna get deal. into it and now i'm getting into it well I, i'll get into it here's this it's <laughs> the same it's the same concept with uh trading hendon hooker it's this it's this idea that they're going to take an injured player, 
invest in he- rehabbing that injured player, set a developmental plan up for this player, allow them to develop, put them on a, it, it, they're taking up a valuable roster spots, add players that help them to develop. And then you get them to the point where you're developed and you're getting ready to get them to contribute into a key role. And then you want to trade them. <laughs> no way you're going to tra- the Hendon hooker and, 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 uh, and JMO trade. That's lunacy. Okay. I, like I know it's fun to talk about, but like you actually need two quarterbacks. You actually need a starting receiver in this league. And so they're not going to invest years, one year, two years, at the, two years for Jamo, one year for him. They're not going to invest a year giving up an important roster. Like they gave up a roster spot that they could have used in the playoffs in order to keep Hendon Hooker on the roster in order to develop him. They're not going to do that if there's not a plan for him. They're not trading Hendon Hooker. <laughs> it's the same thing with JMO. They've been, this has been, they traded up 20 spots to get a guy that they knew wasn't going to contribute until year three, and you're going to trade him as soon as he's ready to can get out of here. Get 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 out. Not and, and not to mention, you're talking about trading these guys when they're at like their lowest trade value. Like who's gonna trade for Hendon Hooker when he hasn't done anything in this league? Who's gonna trade for JMO when he's only shown a smidge of his potential? Like you are talking about trading these guys right before they could be, be hitting their peak, their their trade peaks, like next year. If if Hendon Hooker like has to step in for eight games and he balls his ass off. And you ju- you already did the <laughs> the extension for for Jared Goff. Then you could be in a place where like, oh my God, we have Hendon Hooker who has starter potential, but we already committed to Jared Goff. Let's trade Hendon Hooker. Like you could you could start to have that conversation if he gets on field and starts balling out. I don't think you do it, but you can have that conversation. If J Mo balls out next year and you're like, uh, we just paid. It's silly. But but to be clear. The JMO stuff. No one in Detroit is suggesting that. It is one Chiefs Twitter account who said, "Oh, five days until we get JMO," and everyone in Detroit somehow found that tweet and felt the need to call him an idiot. Why? Why? It's a guy with a thousand followers. Relax. There, there are a ton of idiots out there with a thousand followers. Freezing on your end now. What is happening? Why is everything breaking? Your rant was uh, so emphatic that it broke Twitch. I don't know. Is it everybody? I'm not even getting errors on my end. That's the thing. I saw one on my end. It just said refresh. I hit refresh and it's just spinning. But it's a, to me, it says my stream quality is good. Are can I ref- anyone? I refreshed. I refreshed the entire page, and it seemed to work fine. So, so <coughs> can anyone? Okay, it's back. It's back. <coughs> <coughs> ah. Anyways. <sighs> uh JT Sam says, my reaction to JMO getting traded talk. Let's see what it is. No, that's not true. <laughs> you don't understand football. You don't what? understand what's happening. You are being fed it. this propaganda and it's working and I hate you. I hate your stupid fan. Base. No, that's not true. Did they clip you? <laughs> they did. I don't What is Does anyone remember what the context to this is? <laughs> Understand football. You don't understand what's happening. You are Wait, being fed this looking, propaganda. I'm, oh, oh this is about. So I don't have it anymore. This is about the mm-hmm. Cowboys. The uh, the ending of that game. I'm. <laughs> YouTube is not fine. We're not live on YouTube. Stop it, chat. Don't lie. <laughs> if we were live on YouTube now, I'd be livid. <laughs> <laughs> now now you're making me I'm not going to rant again. The the rant it was the same rant I said yesterday which is everyone decided the need to pile on the one Chiefs account that suggested this trade. This guy with one uh, a thousand followers, everyone he tweets this one thing and everyone gets all in a ruckus and 
I'm like, I guess my frustration is like sometimes one tweet like that, it'll become, it'll spread like wildfire. And then like all, you know, these YouTubers will start talking about it. People on Twitter will start talking about it. Some people might even start writing about it. And it's just like, this isn't a real rumor or discussion. It's one person's opinion. And 80 million people already dunked on him on Twitter. We don't need to have this discussion. I don't hate YouTube, though. (laughs) (sighs) Anyways, I'm out of breath. Anyway, uh, time to get out of here, I think, probably. (coughs) I feel like the feed is really, like, behind. Refresh again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah lose everything but yeah, thoughts on Disley the the tight end that the the Seahawks cut I don't know do they need I think I, I don't know part of me is just like yeah just resign Brock Ray and call it a day I think they will uh I think they will resign Brock yeah that's my guess I don't know I know, I know, I know, John. You're a big Disley fan. I saw you tweeting about it earlier. I don't, I can't pretend like I know a ton about him, to be quite honest. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. <sighs> what? I'm. So you know, we all have like these unconscious biases. Right? It's mm-hmm. just a natural thing. Sure. Um, Phoenix Knight asks about Gran- John Grin- uh, Greenyard. Greenard. Mm-hmm. Uh, he played at Florida. Mm-hmm. I have an unconscious bias towards Florida players. For or against? Just, against. Like, I just. Tease Tabor. I never Jared liked Davis. I, I don't know why it is. I try. I try to take the helmet off. I just never really end up like, look, I loved it. Like, yeah. Um, when Al, Al, when Anzalone and Jared Davis were both there together, like that was a good team. Like I liked, but like, I don't know if it was like the lions needed a corner one year and they had a, and they had a corner that was highly rated and I hated them. And, and, I got the, and ever since then I've oh, noticed like I've been I remember critical. that and oh there was there was an edge rusher there was an edge rusher too that I um, nah, didn't see. like and then I and I made a mistake when talking about him that's where yes. I misspoke that was the edge rusher yep okay um the I left out a word <laughs> I left out the word processing um when talking about him and i said he has mental issues <laughs> instead of saying he has mental processing issues <laughs> and i got absolutely destroyed uh by some florida fans that were like you don't know what you're talking about and i didn't i didn't mean he had mental health problem, <laughs> but like I said it and I, I left the word out. So like, I'm, I'm taking responsibility. I did not, that's not what I meant. I went on the next week and apologized and said, that's not what I meant. Like that. I meant he has processing issues and he did. He terrible, he had terrible processing, but I misspoke <clears throat> and, uh, yeah. I caught a lot of heat for that. that I was, uh, I remember that. That was, I re- <laughs> that was, that was and, pre and, and, Pride and, and Detroit you know days, right? Yeah, and he um, and he was like they he had like first round hype and everybody was in love and I'm like I don't like him I don't like him at all I don't think he processes anything and what happened he ended up going on like day four and then busted and never he played didn't even finish his rookie year, um but oh yeah that was a huge error on my part and again I think it's the subconscious <laughs> bias I have for Florida I maybe it's just Florida defenders but maybe. like oh god. I really have to be like, so when I'm watching Florida guys, I really have to like 
check myself. I do the same thing when I watch Michigan guys. I'm oh, I try to be overly critical on Michigan guys so that I'm not called a homer, which is happens anyways, no matter what I do. <laughs> well, but I mean, like, when, when you're writing about the cornerbacks and you have 500 words on Mike Sanderstrill and like I 200 on everyone Sanders else, so <laughs> it doesn't so help much. your case. <laughs> I can't help it. Um, I can't help it. That guy has every he's. I love him as much as I loved Brian, Brian Branch. Branch. Last I knew you were going to say that. As yeah. much as much as because I I never stopped talking about either <clears> of those guys. Like I have to stop. It was I hated Vernon Hargraves. That was the corner that I absolutely hated. And then uh, yeah, and then the edge rusher. I was terrible. Oh god. We we it's have these bad. scars where like, it's it's not it so much. Huge, it was a big mistake. Right. It's not so much like missing on a prediction, right? Like to me, that that's part of the business. You, you're going to miss on predictions. That's fine. But like when you make a reporting mistake, or to me, those yeah. are the ones that really, really stick with you. Like there's one that I I still I, I can't remember the specifics of it because I don't remember the people involved. But like <clears throat> I made an assumption based on an interaction like a mic'd up interaction that we only saw a clip of. And I wrote a whole story about it. And the guy that I wrote it about, it was, I think it was someone talking to Stafford and, and he said something and I took it as one thing and I ran with it. I ran an entire story about it. And the guy was like, you don't know what you're talking about. That's not what we were talking about. Like he, Mm. he posterized us on Twitter. This must've happened like six, seven years ago. And I still remember it and I'm still embarrassed by it. And it's like, those things are going to happen, but when you make a, a mis- mistake like this, it, it's the thing that I always have to remind myself of why, like, when there's a breaking story or when there's any sort of uncertainty about a story or when, you know, t- when, when Jerry Jacobs tweets out something that is s- certainly sounds like he's not returning, but you aren't entirely sure, you got to be extremely careful because you make one mistake in this business and and you'll you will lose people permanently permanently credibility is as, as they say like it's it's an easy thing to lose it's a hard thing to gain y- you you make one mistake and it's over with some people and understandably so like my job is to be a reporter it is to be accurate if i mess up people won't trust you Especially in this age, right? Where no one believes anything anymore. Mm. And so, like, I, this is why, like, when, the, whenever there's anything that's just like, I'm not sure yet, I, I, I understand that this is almost certainly how you should interpret this news. I mean, you, we have conversations like this all the time in our Slack of like, can we run with yep. this yet? Yep. I'm not sure. It's, right. it's, it's hard. It's a hard business. And and I know sometimes if we jump the gun and we're the first out there, we're going to get more clicks. I know if we throw a big, like, just rumor at the front of a title and and publish it, we'll get more clicks. But sometimes it's not worth it. Um, It was Jakari Polite. That was oh, that. that's right. That's right. Oh, my God, that name. Holy cow. <clears throat> Uh, I I did not like his game at all. Um, <coughs> man, I am uh, I'm looking at that quote in there in, in from uh, was did someone <laughs> leave it in your? Radio, Florida. What's that? Did someone? It, oh yes, it, it was a review yeah. in your podcast that someone called you. Oh out, yeah, right? and, and and Twitter and Is yeah, it still I got there. It. In oh, the I'm in the sure. podcast reviews, I'm sure. Hmm. Sure. If you're ever bored. That um confused sports radio call and show, that's a great quote from a very underrated movie that I am blanking on the name of. <laughs> confused radio small uh call in show. You said the Gators fans don't have the guts to call in. What, oh, what's yeah. your point? Um, again, that was I, T- Tim Allen is the is the lead, but it's got like Renee Russo oh, and it's, it's got like uh, Yes. Oh my god. Yeah. It's got like a. It's, it's Patrick a, Warburton it's a, is a cop in that movie. Janine Garofalo's in that movie. Yeah, she's the other cop. That's yep. a really underrated yep. movie. What is that um, called? Um, uh, Heavy D. 
is in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> That's a diamond in the rough movie, and so- I don't Sophia like Sofia Vergara Allen. is in that movie. Oh my god, um, is she? Yeah, Sofia Vergara is is the nanny. Um, oh sh. And uh, Johnny Knoxville wasn't Johnny Knoxville yep. in that movie too. Yep. Um, God, what is that movie? Yeah. I don't know. I want to. Someone in like chat, you got to know this. Obviously, J. Liv well, knows it. Yeah, right. Jukari Polite was terrible. I said it. I didn't. I I was very critical of him, and I was right except for my one sentence. <laughs> is wait, who's like the hippie dude? Big trouble. That's it. Is <laughs> big trouble? Yeah. Perfect. Is Ryan Reynolds the hippie dude in that movie? Who's like the weird no, hippie dude that lives in the no, tree? It's um no, that's um that's the guy from from um from the um not the uh, the Kevin Smith movies. He's um he's oh. in the Kevin Smith movies. He usually plays um oh man, it's not Paul Rudd. No, it's not Paul Rudd. No, it's, the, it's it, um he plays a smarmy dude, which is why I think it why I thought it was Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, it's like the same kind yeah. of character actor. Yeah, no, it's um. God. Yeah. Oh, I know. I gotta look. I'm gonna look it up. <clears throat> Was but that a goat? the guy from the Kevin Smith movies? Yeah. Jason Lee. That's it. Yep. Jason Lee. There you go. <clears throat> yeah. That's like a, it's loaded. Stanley Tucci's in that movie, right? <laughs> that's right. Yeah. He's the in, rich like, dude. Yep. Th- Tom Sizemore, Ben Foster. If you can get your hand on Zoe that movie, Chanel. Zoe Zoe's Chanel? in that movie? Was it, yeah, yeah, she was the uh the one of the girl the girl. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. DJ Quells, um <laughs> otherwise uh um he was uh the road trip guy. He was the guy with the fake yeah, he was the guy, the guy with the water gun, right? That's right. Yep. My goodness. It's loaded. Shout out to Big That's Trouble. A, a an extremely yeah. underrated dark comedy in two thousand two. Very clever movie too. Andy Richter? Was in that movie. Andy Richter's he was, in he was, he, the was the, he was the mall cop. Yeah, yeah, the airport cop. And he was he played two characters, right? Because his his brother was <laughs> the cop right. at the mall at uh, the outdoor mall. <laughs> yep, <laughs> it's twins. Yeah, it was great. Dang. And uh and uh, Heavy D was the FBI agent mm-hmm. uh, with Omar Epps. Yep, they come uh, in at the, the other one, right? Oh, man. Well, yeah, yeah, they're like they come in at the during the airport stuff. They have like little scenes, but. Wow. Sorry, sorry, guys. We're just bonding over an extremely like <laughs> esoteric movie that half of you it's probably a, haven't it, heard of. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's great. That very was... clever, very well done. Like, yeah, it was really good. <clears throat> good, good on you, Jay Liv, for throwing the quote out there, and good on you, Eric, for recognizing it. Because that, I mean, <laughs> even that is just like a such a small part of the movie. It's. It's just it like the them radio. sitting it, into the car listening, listening to the radio. radio. Yeah. <laughs> and the stakeout. <laughs> he was so mad. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've been there. Yeah, whoever yeah. is the hitman in that that movie oh. is, is fantastic in just being annoyed the entire movie. <laughs> it's, um, here, I'll find it. It's, uh, Dennis Farina? Uh, Dennis Farina. Yeah. Yeah, you'd recognize him if you saw his picture. He's <clears> been in so much stuff. Anyways, man, that that cast was loaded with people. <clears throat> Holy cow! That movie no, kind of gives off like the whole nine yards vibe to me, in terms of just like the tone of that movie. But I think it's better than the whole the whole nine yards. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, let's get out of here. <laughs> we're we're just <laughs> going down movie memory road here, and it's just Eric, me, and and Jay Liff. <laughs> oh no cattle snacks knows too yeah he he has jason lee which i think his name was putty or something i just yeah. had it up um he did have an obsession with fritos in that movie that is true <clears throat> and and sophia regard <laughs> yes he liked he her upset. but yeah <clears throat> she was very nice to him yes all right. Uh, anyone? Is, there's no way John is still live. Is he? He had like a 12 hour stream he was doing today. I'm guessing he's not live anymore. No. All right. Uh, we'll end things there. I think we're gonna try to do the free agency podcast tomorrow night because I messed up. We originally planned 
Thursday night, and then I didn't realize I had other plans on Thursday. So um, we're going to try to do it tomorrow night. And then uh, Twitter spaces on Saturday. Right? Maybe? Yeah, we just introduced Ryan to this party. That's right. <clears throat> All right. Uh, we're getting out of here. Uh, if you missed any of this, I am going to try to upload it to YouTube tonight because we didn't broadcast on YouTube. So if you're a YouTuber uh, and you missed any part of the show, we'll, we'll upload it there. Or you can watch it here. Or it should be on the podcast either tomorrow or the day after. I'm not sure if Chris is going to... Um, string it out here but uh anyways appreciate you guys joining us we'll see you soon